There's no time. No. The time is... 13. O'clock. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Wednesday night, it's the main show, and it's Thanksgiving Eve, yeah. at least if you're in the United States. So hopefully everyone's going to have a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Well, it's Thanksgiving Eve no matter where you are in the world. They're just not celebrating it over there. Okay, if you want to get technical yeah, about it. <laughs> that's the right. thing. I actually, okay, so I made um, a little bit of an announcement on the community page on YouTube all the, I mean, we're still going to do the live streams at the same time, but all the recorded stuff is probably going to be like a little bit late just because I got really behind and because of the holiday and everything like that. So, you know, normally if you were a patron, you would have already, like I would have already put up like a couple things, but you know, we just haven't got around to doing them yet. So, you know, stuff will be up, but it'll just be like a little bit later than normal because I'm just kind of like behind. So don't be alarmed. But, a lot of stuff going on. Got to do a lot of cooking and shit. Had that's what. I, yeah, that's what I mean. I couldn't mean, the, even, I couldn't even cook for today. I had to go out and do. You know, we had to go Chinese, get Chinese food. <laughs> cooking pies, sides. Did a bunch of prep work over a couple of days, cutting celery and <clears throat> onions and stuff for the for the dressing and for yeah. the stuffing. Yeah. So. But all I got to do is cook the turkey tomorrow. So, we'll see. That's yeah. that's what you do. And got a lot of extras. Doing a lot of, like, work on it. But, yeah, shit, like, yeah, we couldn't even use the kitchen, so we had to uh, get Chinese food. But that was, like, I mean, that was a pretty good deal because yeah. it ended up being, like, more than I could eat. So I might eat some more after the show, but yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't eat it all. Camp yeah. Guy said, I've been assembling casseroles all day today. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I got uh, one of those. You know, I got to do green bean casserole. That's easy, though. That's true. Yeah. You put the cream of mushroom soup in it and the damn potato, the, the uh, fake onion rings. Well, not fake, but the pre-made onion rings on top of it. Yeah, the stuff. crispy onions. Yeah. You like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, like I don't it. really like green bean casserole. That's a fucking redneck, fucking, redneck fucking cuisine right there, man. It's a, it's a special dish. Honestly, if I, you know... Um, if I have that everywhere, they probably do that in Australia. I would normally just... I'm just like a turkey, potatoes, stuffing pumpkin pie type of girl yeah. like if you didn't make any other shit other than that that i'd be totally happy we're gonna have we're gonna have instant mashed potatoes oh i'll just do those tomorrow <laughs> i mean that's still man good. i got so much other stuff you know i know what I, mean? I know yeah but sometimes it's nice to have like the nice ones though. i don't have any fresh potatoes yeah oh well we'll do that ben says when are the indians coming over <laughs> yeah they ain't coming <laughs> nobody's coming over we're just gonna eat it all yeah they got their own shit <laughs> they got their own shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they asked around. I asked around for some of our friends if they needed a place to go. They're all. They all got places to go. Everybody's got places to go. Pretty yeah. much. Well, and um, you remember Tiff from Ibar? Yeah. She has been for many, many years. Has always like opened up her house for anybody that. Mm -hmm. So she, because she announces it like every year. She's been doing that for as long as I can remember. So, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, Camp Guy said we're doing a wet brine turkey breast on the Ron Popeil rotisserie. Okay. Mm. Ron nice. Popeil. <laughs> Ron Popeil? That dude's not, he's not still alive, is he, that um, guy? I thought um, he was the one out of Hannibal. No. A, he's the uh, one that did uh, all Popeil, the yeah. all the gadgets yeah, from, okay. like, the, the infomercials yeah, okay. and whatnot. Weird Al Yankovic wrote a song about him. Did I just kick you in the, oh. Uh, I thought I just kicked Pookie in the face. Uh. Because I was, like, putting my there. foot down, and I was, like, I felt something, like, behind my heel. I guess it was your foot. Mm. Um, yeah, so I probably, I was, wasn't really thinking, but I was just kind of like, oh, I guess we could have done, like, a more Thanksgiving-adjacent, like, topic. But, I mean, there's nah, really not. Well, and the thing, it. well, the thing about it, too, is that we've already done, I think, like, last year or the year before, we always did, like, American histories type of stuff. Like, we did, like, Lost Colony of Roanoke and all that kind of stuff, which isn't explicitly to do with Thanksgiving, but was kind of, like, American history-adjacent. But, and I just couldn't, you know, it's like, I can't really think of much of it. It's just kind of like cri when we do the Christmas show, it's like we already did like all the fun Christmas topics and now I can't think of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, oh, well. Zach says, uh, he's asking if, uh, he's trying to think of something healthy to order for dinner. Well, we don't know what's around there, so I wouldn't really know. 
He says, my problem with most fast food isn't how it tastes, but it's after I eat it, I feel kind of ill for hours after eating it. Yeah, um, yeah, it depends what it is, but that's the thing. Like, we don't really have much close by here, like I said, other than we don't really even have a lot of fast food, mm -mm. like, close by here. Like, yeah. it's some, like, you know, maybe five or six miles away, but there's nothing not, close. there's nothing really, really close. Like, we have a Chinese place, and... Yeah. There's a subway, like, inside the convenience store, but that's about that's it, yeah. you know. But other than that, it's kind of, like, more fancy shit, you know. Not fancy, but, you know, fast casual. Privately, privately owned stuff. Yeah. It's not uh, yeah. corporate. Right, that's the thing. Um, I mean, you could probably, if you called, like, Grubhub or something, they'd probably yeah. bring it to you, but it'd probably be cold by the time I got here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, this evening, we'll be talking about one of our favorite topics... Scientology. Shitting on the Church of Scientology. But more specifically, we want to talk about the Lisa McPherson case because it struck me that as many shows as we've done about Scientology and as many times we've talked about Scientology, we've never talked specifically about the Lisa McPherson case. And I thought it was time to rectify that. Actually, I think somebody recommended it. And I was like, yeah, duh, why don't we do that? Because like I said, that's I have like a personal connection to that because I worked at the same company that she worked at, like obviously several years later, like after she had died. Yeah. But um, some of the people were still there from that time. And like the woman that ran the company uh, also ran the company back then. It was like Lisa McPherson's, McPherson's boss. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the people that kind of like oversaw the whole thing. So you know what I mean? Like she knew her and everything. So, you know, it's kind of like, I don't remember a lot of their names. I do remember, like, the woman's name that, uh, that ran the place because it's on the Wikipedia page. But um, I specifically remember that one of the sales reps at the company that I worked for was Lisa McPherson's roommate at the time. But I can't remember what her fucking name was. Like, I can remember what she looks like, but I can't remember what her name was. Because I worked there. The company was called, I don't know if it's still there or not. It's called AMC Publishing. And, um, so I, I, I worked there in like 2001, 2002, something like that. And Lisa McPherson died in 1995, but a lot of the same people were there. So that's, uh, what that's going to be all about. But yeah, it's just, um, this is a pretty fucked up. It's a pretty fucked up story. And like I said, we, we've done a lot of stuff about Scientology, so you know, as we go on, like, talking about that case specifically, then, uh, you know, we can kind of come in with more crazy shit about Scientology. Ben said, the top Scientologist's wife went missing, didn't she? Yeah, Shelly uh, Miscavige. No one's seen her in public, as far as I know, since about 2007. Um, and the thing about it, I think when uh, there was a whole thing about uh, Leah Remini, because she was friends with her, and after Leah Remini left, she was actually kind of, like, asking around, like, where Shelly was. And basically, she got the runaround. And after she left the church, she kind of got worried. So she went and reported her missing. Uh, and supposedly, the cops went and investigated. But they were like, well, she's an adult. And we found her. And she's alive. And so, you know, stop talking about it. And, um, you know, and she's not being held against her will. But that's just what they said. So nobody's seen her since then. Um, what should we talk about? Shelly. Shelly. Oh, yeah. Shelly Miss Cavish. Shelly Miss Cavish. Yeah, okay. I thought you were talking about Leah. Uh, not Leah Remini. Uh, fucking uh, girl that died. What's her name again? Today. Lisa McPherson. Yeah, yeah. I thought about McPherson. Okay, yeah. Yeah. No, no Miss, she... Yeah, they know where Shelly is. Yeah, they know where she is. What's yeah. it like? She's probably like in a fucking dungeon somewhere. I nah, imagine. that's not where she is. I heard, <laughs> I heard, I heard, uh, later on, I heard where she is. She's just in a real obscure, do nothing job, like taking charge of a damn library somewhere on that damn. What's it called? Um, the rim of the earth. That that. Uh, oh yeah, whatever they call that. That, that, place. that secret Scientology base that's up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. I can't believe it they looks really, like a, I can't believe they really have like this yeah. stuff. It's like a fucking yeah, super yeah. villain it's organization. Like, yeah. It's like a uh, at one time I think it was a uh, like a lodge, like a, like a camping lodge where you know you could rent condos for the for vacation. It was like that. And then they turned it into a Scientology secret base with ultra barrier that goes around it. So it's it's kind of like kind of like a fence that's sharp with a uh, concertina wire across the top of it. There's no way in or out of it. They say it's to keep the bears out. Like, yeah, right. 
and uh, it's got motion detectors and cameras. You, if you get up on that, up on that fence, you know what I mean. The, uh, it detects you, and the cameras zoom in on you. AGP or Angry Gay Pope, who's been on the show before, this is a long time ago. When we used to have guests every now and then. Uh, he did a whole video that they took down. It's gone now. I can't find any of his fucking video stuff. I think he moved some of his stuff to like a different server. Yeah, I got I gotta ask him about that. Well, because American Military 100, I just asked if we'd ever invite him back on the show. Like last time you invited him was. I have him back on. He's just a handful to deal with. <laughs> it's not so much that. It's just that yeah. it's always kind of like a pain in the ass because the the problems that yeah. I had before were not like with him. They were like technical, technical problems. Technical problems, yeah. Like you know, we we always had like fucked up sound and like our our sound was fucked up and his was fine or vice versa and it was like a pain in the ass like to edit it back together. Yeah. So. He, he doesn't ever want to really stay on to topic. He wants to he wants to fucking talk what he wants to talk about. He never know what that dude's going to talk about. Um, oh, now see, you really don't you yeah. don't you don't have any cause to like right. get nil over any other people's case. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we have him on as a guest though to talk about Scientology. You know what I mean? He'll fucking go down a crazy way. Um, but no, I fucking spent fucking just hours and hours watching his shit when it was when it was on YouTube. But yeah. YouTube fucking sank his entire channel, and that was like all of his income and everything. You know, he he's not a real rich guy because uh, he lost his job out of Hollywood. He used to work at Hollywood. Did all the graphics. He did that graphics for Midway, you know, making all those little Japanese planes blow up and stuff. He, that's what he did. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he does like kind of like special effects, right? Like, special effects, yeah. like digital effects and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, that's what he does. And then he became a, a full time protester. He's an activist. Yeah. Right? That's all he does. Well, because I mean, he lives like right there around right. like where Scientology is. So you know what I mean. Well, he was doing Scientology because it was there. And it was available. He was making money on it, but now he's making money on other stuff too. So he, he he'll he'll do any kind of. For la last I heard from him, he, he he'll do any kind of activism, you know. Well, he's kind of more like people know who he is because yeah. he had like a large following, like on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah, but you know, there's that <laughs> gateway to inner earth. Maybe I mean it yeah. might as well be like yeah, the, the shit like earth. the shit they come up with, like the names yeah. they come up with stuff. They always want it to sound all like who like high tech and fucking Sci shit like that like Elrond would come up with Scientology is no joke that that church is huge physically I mean it's got properties everywhere and um, it has more properties than members I think because <laughs> they probably they, they have to be a church so they so they can't hoard money they gotta keep spending money and every time they raise money they gotta spend it and they're fucking crazy they're kind of like they're kind of paramilitary and they kind of believe in fucking mythical concepts that, that the military believes in, like what I was in, that, that you can constantly improve exponentially forever. You know, yeah. fucking, which that is, so every day they do kind of like self-criticism things where they have to fill out a report card and rat on themselves of whether or not their numbers increased or decreased for the day. So they constantly have to be growing. The church is constantly has to be growing so they can convince themselves that they're taking over the world. They don't call it taking over the world. They call it clearing the planet. That sounds nicer, yeah. doesn't it? They're going to clear the planet at $60,000 a person. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'd like to see that, bro. It's not going to happen. All right. And um, just ridiculous, you know. So they, it forces them to do things like raise money and buy properties. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a virus, it's like a computer virus. It just keeps doing the same thing over and over again. So they have all these fucking empty, pristine-looking properties everywhere, and they give them all these fantastic names, but they don't really have a need for them. They'll just put some Scientology books up on the window and put a bunch of damn video screens in it, and they'll have one person in there, 24 hours a day, just watching, watching to try to and trying to spread Scientology. And nobody ever damn walks in the door. Because why would you? Why would you? Right. <laughs> Why would anyone? Locked, you know? Yeah, that's probably yeah. like you know. Honestly, it sounds like hey, if they're gonna pay you, shit, I'll go sit in a bookstore for however many hours a day. They're not though, and nobody comes in. They're I know, I know, they're not paying them. Yeah, that's I think, the thing. I think they're mostly Sea Org people or what, or something else called staff. They don't pay them. They're just kind of like slaves. They feed them. They kind of give them a place to sleep. But that's about it. And they don't get much sleep. They keep them awake constantly. Because it, it's kind of like basic training. Yeah. And um, keeping people from sleeping 
keeps them malleable. You can, yep. you can control them easier. Or yep. break them of bad habits. That's another thing it can do. So it's why the military does it. They're also trying to weak out, weed out the weak, people that can't be instructed, that kind of stuff. Ben says, some of their associated organizations are funny. I always used to get pamphlets from the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, which yeah, is an yeah. anti-psychiatry lobby group. Yeah, yeah they also run um, Narconon. I, I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah. Um, they have, and they have some offshoot ones too, because when I used to work at a print shop, uh, over in Longwood, every now and then, like, there'd be some weird church that would come in and, like, want some pamphlets or flyers, like, printed out, and they always would have some kind of, like, weird sounding name. But then, like, some of the language and stuff on there, I'm like, that's a Scientology front group. Because yeah. as soon as, like, you know, the um, the South Park episode came out or as soon as Leah Remini came out and, like, started making her show and as soon as everybody realized what a, what a fucking shit show it was, then they started pulling all these little groups, like, these little offshoot groups. And there's groups, too, of, like, people that left Scientology but still believe in it. Yeah. So they're kind of, like, starting their own shit, too. Yeah, it's Marty Rathbun. Marty Rathbun yeah. and his group. He had a little bit yeah. to do with this Lisa McPherson case, yeah. too. Yeah, Marty left the church, but he's still a Scientologist. He teaches Scientology for free, but they're after him. Sending the squirrel, squirrel busters after him and shit. Squirreling the tech is what that's called. Yeah. In other words, uh, undercutting their profit margins. Well, yeah, know? that's exactly, that's why they're mad. Yeah, they get mad at that. They don't want, they don't want people teaching Scientology. Like but that fucking information is so fucking valuable. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's the biggest bunch of bullshit you've ever heard in your life. Well, I don't know about that. That's that's a <laughs> that's a pretty bold statement because yeah, I've heard a lot, a lot of, of stuff I've talk. heard a lot of bullshit in my yeah. life. But um, you know what I mean. It's up there though. It's, it's up there. It's up there. Uh, yeah. Murder Hornet said it's a snitch culture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Ben's talking about the free personality tests on the street corners. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of their big things. Um, uh, it's Ameri a weird mixture of like corporatism and. Military, military corporatism, and Soviet communism. They use a lot of the same tactics as like the KGB and mind control type shit. And yeah. They, because they were from the Cold War, that era. Yeah. And L. Ron Hubbard was a, a naval commander. He, he commanded a mind sweeping ship, some kind of mind sweeping destroyer or something. And uh, he was just a military guy. And in that era, it's still kind of like that. Military officers are very corporate. They like how things are done on a corporate way. And he was combining like... He was making a corporate religion for America. It was very, very American. Very corporate. But it, it had infused in it a lot of damn Soviet mind weapons and mind control type devices. Like something that... Not even Soviet... I might want to say it's like Maoist, probably. Like something that Maoist China would use on you. You know, re-education type techniques. American Military 100 said, Keeping people sleep deprived was a tactic used by Jim Jones also. Yeah, yeah a lot of cults do shit like that. Yeah. Because, yeah, for that very reason. After you haven't had sleep for a couple days, you're gonna things are going to start getting a little hazy around the yeah. edges. Uh, you know, that's how that goes. And Ben says Millennium did a great parody episode of them with the selfieologists. Selfieologists. And the yeah. mystery electrocution death of an apostate ex member. Yeah. <laughs> that's like pretty funny actually. Actually that's a good that that, that that's a good name for them, selfieologists. Because <laughs> Or selfie yeah, selfieologists. Because to to really make it to really be susceptible to Scientology, you have to really be into yourself. You have to be constantly worried about yourself and your own Progress and you also have to like and you also have to kind of like think that one somebody yeah. outside who doesn't know you can tell you how to like fix your shit yeah and two you have to really really like hierarchy and structure yeah. and corporate bullshit yeah. and i don't like any of those right. things which is why I, it never appealed to me ever. And, and you also have to have a, a real strong desire to be approved of you, you have to really care about what other people think of you so you have to be kind of conformist to begin with corporate conformist, kind of superficial, um, trying to fit in, and you always have to, uh, you have to think real highly of yourself. In other words, you'll hear, you'll hear this theme over and over again with Scientology. There's something wrong with the world, and it's our responsibility to save the world and to help people. That's an arrogant fucking claim. 
You know what I mean? It is. That you're good enough, and that you are squared away enough and strong enough to fix the fucking world. That fucking... And these people are ate the fuck up. When you see them, I'll run into them. <laughs> they are ate the fuck up, all right? They think they're awesome. Yeah, they think, you know, they have a wizard complex, all right? And, and I'm like, and, well, and, I'm going to respectfully up. disagree yeah. that they, you're awesome. They, 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 from what I've seen, they tend to be mediocre. Yeah. There's nothing to them. Yeah. They think there's something to them, but they're... they're and I mean, the very fact that they would be lured into something yeah. like that in the first place, that already makes me look askance at their, like, fucking... Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a different story if you were raised in the shit, and that's, yeah. like, all you know, like, you were a kid. Um, you know, then you get a pass. But other than that, uh, if you, as an adult, like, yeah. kind of got sucked into this, I just, I don't know... Like, what, what about it would appeal to you? Like, I feel like maybe back in the old days when you didn't really know, when they yeah. didn't really know. But nowadays, there's, like, no excuse. Evidently, David Miscavige and Tom Cruise just treat them all like fucking dumb fucks. And they probably are. Yeah. They probably are dumb fucks. Well, I mean, we've talked about this before, but Miscavige yeah. and Cruise, they just seem like the most arrogant fucking cocks ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? That'd be like heaven for them. <laughs> fucking run around and tell me what to do. Yeah. Like they're admirals. That's what they, I mean. They are like, like they, it is like paramilitary. They run around like they're admirals. Because honestly, one of the things, of, of the many personality traits that I can't stand in a person, yeah. um, I can't stand people that are really like, um, as the British would say, up themselves. Yeah. I can't stand people that think that they're like better than everybody and are like arrogant and think they have some kind of like privilege. Like they can tell you what to do because they're better or smarter or something I'm like fuck off well they better be able to deliver if you can do that you better be able to deliver even then even yeah. then i'm like i still don't want your dumb ass telling me what to do knock it off you know what i mean it's like i don't know i don't know i don't get it and i don't get like where i don't get why they think they're so much cooler and that's what makes me laugh like every time tom cruise like says all that shit about because he's a scientologist so he's the only one that can do this that and the other thing i'm like get the fuck out of here with that bullshit yeah, you're talking about talking about that thing where he's talking about the the uh the car wrecks and the ambulances and that you jump out and you're the only person that can help because you're a Scientologist. He, he's, he's towing the party line. They got him up there. Look, you got to fire up the church, man. Fucking tell them what they want to hear. So I think he was doing his job, really, you know. It sounds ridiculous to us, but Scientologists love that shit. That's the kind of shit they want to hear. So, We're the best ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a rah, rah, rah speech. I'm like, mm, yeah. no. He, he doesn't fucking believe that. <laughs> I hope not, because if he did, he'd have some problems. He knows who those scientists are. I mean, are. who the fuck would act... If you actually really did believe that, you probably need some mental help. Those Scientologists, are, those Scientologists in general, they're just mediocre. You know, they're, they're not... Super, that's what I mean. They're not Superman. I, yeah, but that's yeah. the thing. I kind of feel like these are the, feel like they should be Superman. Yeah. And it's like, so they can, like, talk themselves into, like, they're the most, they're more awesome yeah. than everybody else. And I'm just like, just get yeah. the fuck And they over. have their own little ways of talking and doing things. And if you don't do it their way, then you're, you're then you're, you're a fucking subhuman. That's the way they think. You Pretty know? much. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about because you don't know this tech and you don't know this and that. And, and we're, we're the, the only shit. ones that know anything. Yeah. And then that's not what happened. What happened was, is that L. Ron Hubbard was hanging out with a bunch of guys one of them was, uh, you know, Anton LaVey, and they were, they just got on the, they got on the damn uh, Aleister Crowley, make a motherfucker a wizard fucking technique, where if you promise to make a motherfucker a wizard, you can get money out of him, leveling him up. Well, pay me some more money, and I'll bring you to the next level. Next thing you know, you'll be raising the dead, you know, all that kind of shit. That, that's, that's all they're doing. <laughs> they call it fucking going up the bridge. You know? And the thing about it, it's almost kind of like foolproof because yeah. if the person calls you out on your bullshit, like, hey, yeah. I couldn't like bring a person back from the dead, and they're like, well, you're just not good you're enough. You're not good enough. You're just right, not good yeah. enough. That's your fault. We told you how to do it. Right. You're just not doing it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much like all religions pull that bullshit. Yeah. But. And they go, we got to send you back to fucking square one. Okay, we're going to take all your ranks away. Hey, I paid for those. Yeah, but you didn't learn it right. You got to go back to fucking OT. <laughs> you got to go back to a OT4. We're going to start you over again. Right. You're, you're actually an OT4. Yeah, and see, they pay a shit ton of money to go up those OT levels. Most of them don't even go up them. They don't have the money to pay for it. They just get stuck in the damn Sea Org, which is like the Sea Organization is kind of like their version of the fake Navy. It's like the, the it's their clergy, but it's run like a paramilitary type organization. They don't have any weapons to speak of. They better not, or we'll no. all be in trouble. Mopping floors, 
setting up books and shit and fucking building fucking you know renovating the inside of fucking buildings and stupid shit like that Granther says Battlefield Earth with John Travolta and Barry Pepper is often lumped in with Ishtar and Howard the Duck as the worst movies ever made. Fuck when will like there be movie. a 13 o'clock review? We probably should. Yeah. Although, honestly, I, I don't. It. I have never been able to sit through the whole entire thing. Yeah, It's bad, but I liked it. I thought it was fucking hilarious. Although, I'll go to bat for Howard the Duck. I actually really yeah. like Howard the Duck. <laughs> but not for Battlefield Earth. That movie just made me want to like fall asleep. I don't know what it was. It's just kind of like... I liked Battlefield Earth because I understood Bat- Battlefield Earth. The fucking the guy who's supposed to be the hero in Battlefield Earth is a spitting image. It's the dead ringer for David Miscavige himself. So you know that they cast this dude to actually be David Miscavige, savior, savior of the world against the aliens. Yeah, Miscavige probably got a fucking boner yeah. watching that shit. Yeah, and then you had hey, it's me. John Travolta running around in big ass fucking shoes and. They shot him in a way, and they, they think they might have had like some extensions on their feet to make him like another eight or eight or nine inches taller. And it just it was funny, man. I like, All I remember from that really movie cool. was that it was like greenish blue the whole time, and yeah. everything was shot in Dutch angles. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So it's kind of like a cartoon movie. After that, I was just and well, it, it wasn't even as fun as that implies. No. I was just like sitting there going, I don't even care what's going on. I'm like. <laughs> I don't know. I just found it really, really boring. It wasn't even really entertaining enough to like keep. It wasn't bad. It was bad, but it wasn't like bad in a way that would want to make me keep but, watching. But what's it. funny is it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be promoting Scientology, but the alien, the alien invaders, the way they operated, they were kind of showing them as a bad example. Like you know, uh, ultra greedy business people who were totally into corporate fucking rules and regulations and how to get leverage on people. Maybe to them that's good, though. I don't understand. To who? To the Scientologists, that's good. No, that maybe, is Scientology. Maybe, that's what I mean. That is Scientology. They see that as a good but thing. They're, but no, they were portraying them, they, were, they portrayed them as the bad guys, and that they get, but it's it's just more double fucking speak. You know what I mean? The way the, way the bad guys were in that movie is the way Scientology is. The way the good guys are in that movie, that's not the way Scientology is, that's just the way regular people are. That it's, they use reverse psychology on people. Either that or maybe Scientologists are so deluded that they actually think that they're like the good guys. Like that they are like the good guys are portrayed in the movie. Well, the low level people, the public and the people, the, the people that join that church, you know, they're only in there for, you know, a couple of years maybe or whatever. Yeah, they think that. But no, the, um, if you look at Miscavige and just the way L. Ron Hubbard and just the way that that shit was organized. No, it's like the way the aliens were. It's all they do is worry about money. Money yeah. and hierarchy and getting le- leverage on people and it's kind of got a corporate structure to it. That's Scientology. Yeah. Ben says, I've heard the Battlefield Earth books aren't that bad, but I never was inspired to read them. Yeah, I'm just kind of like, well, I'm not a real big sci-fi person to begin with. And honestly, there are, you know, probably millions of other books I would probably rather be reading rather than... Because what would happen, like, if you... Let's say, for example, that you bought, not that you, anyone would do this, but that you bought one of L. Ron Hubbard's Scientology books, like new. Where does that money go? Does that still go to Scientology or no? Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. So if doesn't. you're going to, just check it out of the library or something. <clears throat> yeah. Don't I, give I, them any money. Battlefield Earth is a great study of confession through projection is what it is. They're confessing. Scientology is confessing to what it is. By projecting its evils onto the alien characters, the yeah. evil alien characters. A lot of people do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, confession <laughs> through projection. Yeah, that's that's very common. Yeah. Well, it's weird. It's re- it's really common because you'd think it would be really obvious, but I guess to people it's not obvious that that's what they're doing. No, the average person has a hundred IQ. That's dumb. Half of them are dumber than that. I mean, that's just the way it is. People believe what they're told. George Carlin said that. Yep, it's true. Um, what's Why are you up? crediting him? Huh? Why you want to credit him? He's dead. No, I'm just saying he was the one that said that. Yeah, though. it's true though. Um, what's up, Dave? He says hello to you too. I'm pooped, and now we got gobble gobble time. Yeah, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. I'm trying to. Uh, we didn't eat anything except the Chinese food today, so hopefully, because yeah. I enjoy all the Thanksgiving food, but I can't really eat that much of it at one time, and it makes me mad. 
Uh, Green Spark said, what are you drinking? It looks nice. It's just like vodka and lemonade, right? Yeah, lemonade with vodka in it. Yeah, it's just vodka and lemonade. But yeah, so I don't know. I, I probably would never be inspired to read the Battlefield Earth books. I can barely sit through the movie. Uh, I'm sure the books are better. They usually are. But like I said, I've got millions of other things I'd rather be reading. I didn't think the movie was that bad. The special effects weren't that good. It just, it's kind of a, a hokey story. It, it had, but it did have some good things about it. You know what I mean? Like it had the damn machine that could, the learning machine, where the rays would go into your eyes and you could interact with it and you could see the little alien is trying to teach you the, teach you the cyclone language, and it, 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 it when it made contact with they put, they put the human in the in the book. They wanted to teach him how to speak cyclone. Which is that was like the language that the aliens used, and fucking particles and rays went into his eyes, and he could see, and it started to communicate with him. And they had a, a language. They called it. He called himself a language slave, and he goes, I, "Excuse me, I, I, I do not mean to pretend. I do not pr mean to pretend to have the authority to teach you the language of Cyclo, but I am just a lowly language slave, and I have been, you know, instructed to to to, to teach to ha you know to teach you this with you know he's apologizing to t for teaching you something because he thinks you're a Cyclo. And the Cyclones had the Cyclos had taken over his planet and shit, and he teaches uh teaches the human guy how to speak Cyclo, and then he could understand it. And they wanted him, and the, the 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 cyclo dude who was being played by um, oh, what's his fucking name? I just said just said his name. Um, hey, Captain Tra Grease. Uh, Travolta. Yeah, John Travolta. Uh, he's going behind the company's back, going to try to uh, mine all this gold because he wants to buy his way out of that off of that planet because he's stuck there on duty there. He wants to get out of there, and he needs a big old bribe if I remember correctly. Uh, all these gold bars and he has to be able to talk to this human slave that they, they had all these human slaves they were kind of went to this barbaric level they were kind of like cavemen when because <laughs> they had destroyed fucking human civilization you know centuries before and uh once he learned how to speak cyclo he also learned a bunch of other stuff and uh led a revolt and got rid of the aliens it was, it was a pretty good story just that there was certain aspects of it that weren't plausible. You know, but. Although you just describing it made my eyes glaze over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the way that's the way Scientologists think, though. I know. Well, yeah. I know. I, I used to yeah. know a lot of them, so yeah. I, I know how they think, if you want to use that word. Yeah. Uh, Gramther said, religious movies are always low-value entertainment, yeah, for yeah. whatever reason. Uh, examples include Fireproof with Kirk Cameron. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Father Stu with Marky yeah, Mark. Fireproof wasn't any good. Fireproof, um, I never sat through the whole movie, That's but I terrible. did um, I did watch the God Awful Movies episode yeah. about it or listen to the podcast about it and they'll that's do what it was, we saw we that's saw. what it was that's like we was. listen and they yeah. go through like minute by minute so a lot right. of times their podcast is like significantly longer than the actual movie that they're talking about because they talk about like every single thing and just like make yeah. jokes about it the whole time but that was there's a lot of like Kirk Cameron ones there's another one called Saving Christmas which really sounds like a fucking hoot I don't it's like I don't I just like I said there's so many good movies out there it's like they sound funny but I want to I want to listen to somebody like making fun of them. Then I'll engage with that. But I'm not going to like sit there and watch it myself and like make up my own jokes. I'm too lazy for that. I want somebody else to make up jokes about it for me. That's the only reason. That's the only way that I'm actually going to watch it or like listen to it. Is so it has to be like god awful movies or Nick DeRamio on YouTube or somebody like that cuz he does religious movies sometimes too. So it just has to be somebody making fun of it and then I'll watch it. I'm not going to sit through it by Battlefield itself, Earth probably could have been successful, but they the budget would have had to have been bigger. The writing would have had to have been better. And I don't think you could tell that story in one movie. It would have been better if it was like a three movies. Yeah. And I don't know if you can keep people's attention that long for that. Because the scope of Battlefield Earth is like about the size of Dune, if I remember correctly. It's a bunch of books. Yeah, I thought it wasn't just one. No, I thought it was a like a whole them. series, like yeah. a whole extended kind of universe type of shit. And it's like, when did he even he write that? Because I kind of feel like... He was 50s, wasn't it? 50s and 60s? 
Yeah, were the books actually specifically, now I can't even remember, were the books actually specifically written in order to plug Scientology? Yeah. Or did yeah. he just, like, retroactively, like, retrofit the story, like, into the Scientology mythos? It had Scientology values to it, or so-called values, or so-called Scientology values. That's the way Scientology, Scientology didn't really have those values. They just claimed to have those values. The main thing from out Battlefield Earth was kind of like anti-corporate greed. Sci the Church of Scientology is not really any not not really anybody that has should be lecturing anybody on corporate greed. I mean that's what right. I mean Jesus. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're one of the last yeah, people yeah. that should have anything to say no, about they that. Have anything to say about that? That's what that is. But like I said, it's confession through projection. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Ben says Scientology was to push the books originally, I think. Yeah, see, that makes more sense to me. That makes more sense to me. Because I thought that the books were older, like predated the founding of the religion. Because, you know what I mean? I hate to call it that, but I don't know. Cult, I guess. We'll just call it cult. Because that's what it is. It didn't become a religion until le until after. It started off that's as Dianetics. What I'm saying. And then they realized that it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't a tax shelter, so they had to pay taxes. So they had to, and L. Ron Hubbard, L. Ron was still alive. He's like, well, we have to convert this into a into a religious faith. So they started putting crosses on things and calling it a religion. And say this is a, and then they uh, got tax exempt status accepted. Yeah. So it was just it was supposed to be a. It started off as Dianetics, which was a kind of a teaser way of selling you a bunch of self-help books. And then they wouldn't, the self-help books weren't going to be enough. The self-help books were going to tell you to go to a Scientology organization and that they would help you. Like a school. Like a training school. Probably got that shit from Dune with the Benny Gesserit and all those fucking, the Chom guilds and all that. And the fucking, you know, <laughs> because that, that kind of stuff is in Dune. Private schools to teach you mental powers. Hmm. Wouldn't surprise me if he got it from that. Yeah, he probably did. Because he, he, like I said, Battlefield Earth, Battlefield Earth was kind of like, and I think he wrote those, it was kind of like Dune, and I think it was written over a long period of time. I know there were a shit ton of books. So I'm sure some of that stuff overlapped with Frank Hubert from some of his time. Somebody might be able to do the, do the numbers. Uh, I'm just surmising. L. Ron Hubbard read science, read, read science fiction. He, he liked it. Well, yeah, that's how he made his money before mm -hmm. he started a religion. He wrote yeah. science fiction books. So he's probably talking about the Benny Gesserit. Probably what Dynex was. Richard Brown said Battlefield Earth was directed by one of the effects technicians on Alien. So, you know, no yeah. slouch, I guess. Slasher Fred said there was a Kirk Cameron movie called Like Father, Like Son that was like a... Like Father and Son? Okay, that was like a masculine version of Freaky Friday. Oh, like where they switch bodies? Okay. I don't want to see that one either. Poor Kirk Cameron. Like, I feel like what, did he, was he always crazy or, because he was, um, like, normal in the 80s, right? He was on that sitcom. What the fuck was the name of that sitcom? I can't remember the name of the sitcom. But he was on one of the sitcoms and he was, like, really, really famous. And then it seemed like he kind of dropped out of sight for a few years and then he came back and he was, like, a wingnut. So, I don't know how that happened. Then, like, he was in all these, like, weird ass hanging out with creationists and making all these fucking crazy ass movies and shit. Growing Pains, thank you. That's what it was called. I couldn't remember the name of that fucking show to save my life. <laughs> so that's your friend saying Cyclos sounds like the bad guys from Battlestar Galactic. Those were, they were the Cylons. The Cylons. Well, still, that is pretty close. Yeah. Cylon, Cyclo. Yeah, the Cyclos, are kind of, I think they're supposed to be kind of like the Psychos, you know? Yeah. Psychos. They, yeah, what they're real subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Cyclos. I think, you know, what, what L. Ron is talking about, he's talking about fucking... Um, SPs. He's talking about suppressive persons. So that that's bad people. Yeah. Yeah, suppressive person. SP. Oh, Grandpa's talking about Kirk Cameron. Oh, he yeah. married an evangelical Christian and made him, and who made him convert. Oh, okay. Well, that explains it. Because yeah, I was saying like back in the '80s when he was like a teenager in his 20s and he was on growing pains, he seemed like a normal enough dude. Um, but then like he came out later. And I'm like, man, what the fuck happened to him? I think one of the similar kind of thing happened to uh, what's her face from. Uh, Clarissa explains it all. What's her name? Mm -hmm. Melissa Joan Hart. She's in a bunch of those religious movies too. So it was like uh, Kevin Sorbo that used to be on uh, Hercules. Yeah, he'll do a religious movie. Yeah, that's all he can do now. 
Yeah, there's, so there's like a whole like He's little there's a whole little ghetto of like yeah. actors that'll do that because a lot of them they're like they believe that stuff so that's why yeah. they're like in those movies. Yeah. But yeah, Sorbo was in all those fucking God's Not Dead movies. Yeah. Which were again, which I've never sat through the whole thing, but like I watched. Made a living out. Breakdowns. Of, well, I don't know. I don't know. He made, makes, I think he made a living at him. Yeah, Zach says like how Tom Cruise married his first wife who got him into Scientology. Yeah, this, well, yeah. what's all these wives like trying to fucking. Well, that's, easy, that's the easiest way to get a dude into a cult is to send women at him. That, that, be that's... like, hey, wouldn't yeah. this cult be a good idea? They hey, call why don't you drink this poison Kool-Aid? Flirty fishing. Yeah. Flirty fishing. Well, that's that one cult that yeah. we talked about a long time ago yeah. called it. Yeah. Which you might as well call it all that because Flirty that's fishing. what it is. Yeah. Turning tricks is another word, or word for it. <laughs> Wait, that's, what, that's what regular people would call it. Like, yeah. Getting money for the church by putting out. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that's something when you have a Christian cult and you just turn all the women into into hookers for you, hookers for Christ, and then they're doing shit with children. What was the name of that one? Fucking ch- 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 children of God. Isn't that what Wait, that? was it children of God or was it something else? I know I get them confused. Children of God, I think it might have been. Yeah, yeah, we did a show a, a long time ago about that. Yeah, mandatory pedoism and shit. Weird shit, man. Granther says, my mom made my dad convert after a few months of dating. Old Granther would not be here had he said no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I guess it's hard for me to like um, really relate because I wasn't raised religious and so it wasn't really something that we talked about, um, you know, in my family. So it's just kind of like, I just, I don't know. I just thought it was like really weird when I heard about that. Uh, Blue Horse, you said Zeno and the Wall of Fire. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was Mo Berg and the Children of God. Okay. So you got it right. Yeah. Children of God. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, did, all did these. We ever all do these. A show on yeah, that? we did. We did a show on him. Yeah, we did. I think it was. Um, I think we did a show with Children of God and maybe one other cult. Like yeah. it was a two cult. <laughs> it was a two. It's a two pronged cult attack, is what yeah. it was, uh, if I remember correctly. You know. They're freakazoids. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, let's see. Slasher Fred said, "Speaking of growing pains, the series once had a short-lived series called Just the Ten of Us. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. That yeah. had the actresses who were in the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Yeah, I remember that too." Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's not it's not fun. But, so, like, so, like I said, anytime you're trying to make a movie that's trying to push a particular religious agenda, it usually is not good. And we've talked about this before. Like, there are movies that could be said to be religious. Like, for example, this is the example I always use. Like, The Exorcist is very clearly, like, a Catholic movie because it's it posits that Catholicism is correct and they could drive out the demons and they were the heroes and stuff yeah. like that. But it's not trying to, like, necessarily push that it's try- not trying to convert people to Catholicism. It's just like showing you a story yeah. where a certain thing happens. You know what I mean? So if you guys don't know what Scientology is, put it in a nutshell. It's a bunch of di- there's a it has a bunch of different, I guess you could say, a bunch of different aspects to it. In terms of business aspect, what it is is it's a, a bunch of it's a series of self help books. That they try to sell, and this then the self help books encourage you to go to organizations and get direct Scientology training to help you with your problems. Now you're gonna find out you got problems you never even thought of as soon, soon as Scientology gets a hold of you. Okay. Um. This self help program ended up being accepted as a religion under U.S. law, so it became tax exempt. But to get that tax exempt status, there's a bunch of weird shit that they have to do. They can't hoard money. They, they have to like constantly prostatalize. They're prostatalize. What do you call it? Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that they have to do to prove to to the federal government that they're a religion. So it makes Scientology do weird things, like endlessly buy property, property that they don't need, because um, they can't have money building up in the bank. Once it became a religion. The religion, okay, the religion was basically based on stuff L. Ron Hubbard had been writing. And he wrote a lot of shit, a lot, a lot of different stuff. On, on each subject he talked about in these books, like he'll have a whole, he had a whole book just based on like radiation. <laughs> and and of course, he, got, he had that all figured out. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, Spoiler alert. Yeah, no, and didn't. you might need to know about <laughs> radiation, okay? And so they have to sell you this book, okay? <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard was uh, a generalist. He was not a 
a fucking scientist. He did not specialize in any one thing. He could spin a yard. He was a bullshitter. He was a bullshitter. Yeah, he was All right. a bullshitter. And, there, and he was very American. And according to people that grew up around him and you know knew him when he was alive, he was a very charismatic guy. People liked him. And uh, he was actually pretty good to the cult members. He didn't abuse anybody. There wasn't any sexual abuse or anything, which is really unusual for a lot of cult leaders. Because he had these little teenage girls follow him around everywhere in these little short shorts as little messengers on the free winds and you know on the boats and he wasn't messing with any of these women so that's not where that's not where l ron hubbard's thing was l ron hubbard's thing was to be important and to be the center of attention and to tell everybody tell stories and entertain the cult and build an empire so i gotta hand it to, to l ron hubbard he as far as cult leaders go he wasn't an abusive one. Well, now, there, much. No, not really. We'll, we'll get into something. We'll get into it. Something now, there were it, people but... in the cult that were like that, that kind of did a lot of weird shit. He wasn't real great with his family. He wasn't a good family man. Um, he had, he, he'd kind of discard one family and pick up another one. Which, you know, he did which All that's just kind of explained in his belief systems that even children are adults. There's all kinds of stuff that is in Scientology. Um, what the religion is, is this. I'm trying to explain it in the terminology that a non-Scientologist could relate to. It is a UFO possession. It's a demonic, alien, UFO possession cult. That's what it's about. Aliens were here a long time ago, and they imprisoned a bunch of evil demons uh, into volcanoes and tried to destroy them by dropping atomic bombs on them. This is long before humans lived here. And those alien souls were set free. They weren't destroyed. And then when humans a a arrived, these, these alien demons could attach to you, and they were called engrams, if I remember correctly. Uh, or, I think they were called engrams. Wait, where do the Thetans come in? Well, now, the Thetans now I can't were remember. souls. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thetans, okay. but I think that the Thetans caused engrams. I don't remember exactly what it was. So these alien souls could attach to you, and that's why you're an alcoholic, and that's why you pick your nose or whatever. <laughs> you know? Don't oh, well, that explains boogers, a lot. <laughs> you know, whatever. It's why you're gay. It's why uh, you can't fucking take care of your money. It's why you can't keep it in your pants. It's why you're a hoe or a garden tool. It's why, yeah, I don't start calling being polite, just call it a garden tool. You're a garden tool, baby. It's why, okay? So what you do is, is once you've identified that these alien evil demons have attached to you and slightly possessing you, making you do all this bad stuff, you're going to have to go through auditing is one of the things. And auditing is where you get on a lie detector, a primitive lie detector, and they ask you a bunch of questions, and they can evidently tell whether or not you're lying or not. And then you have to confess, and all that shit's written down and recorded for later use, okay? Because if you ever leave the church, betray them, then they got all the dirt on you of, of what, you, what you did, all your sins and shit. And they'll use that against you. So it's an alien possession, demonic possession cult that performs exorcisms, demonic exorcisms, on a lie detector test. And they do this during confession, and your confessions are all recorded, okay? And they're all analyzed by experts, okay, that they have. Uh, and these experts try to figure out what the... Experts. <laughs> what training you should have next to push you down the correct path. Now, as you go, you're going to have to level up. You're going to, you know, if you have the money, and you can't just level up because you're good. you got to pay for this training. To level your ass up until you're a fucking wizard, basically. And as you level up, you get more and more force powers, like like out of Star Wars. Eventually, it gets to the point where you have control over space and time, where you can back time up and redo something. See, like let's say for instance, and, and that's later on. That's like OT seven or, or eight or something or six. I don't remember how high that how that how high up you have to be before you can reverse time. But what they'll tell you is this: 
see, we've been driving this car all day. You know, you could have died driving this car, but you stopped it, backed it up, fixed the problem, and went through it again, and you didn't die, and you never knew. So you're secretly protecting yourself and reversing time all the time. That's Just, how fucking powerful that's you That's how are. powerful you are. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, I stubbed my toe, though, the other day. Why didn't I fucking back it up? Yeah, I stubbed your toe ain't shit. You broke your arm three weeks ago, ago, but you didn't know because you stopped time, backed it up, and went through it again, and you, your arm didn't break, and you didn't remember it because, you know, you erased that timeline. That's how they That's how they justify this shit. And you, you might have to spend several hundred thousand dollars to get to that, probably like in a half a million. They, they have, it's, a, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You got a lot of rich nerds out there. That'll give up a lot of money to get this shit. I don't yeah, understand. I kind of feel like, and probably they have this thing because I'm gonna. I want to get into this a little bit too because this is kind of this is a very American uh, mindset. But they probably have a thing where it's like if you like, for example, you passed all the tests or whatever to like to go to the next like fucking OT level or whatever the fuck, but you didn't have the money to do that. And then they would turn that, they'd flip that around on you and say, well, obviously you didn't do it all right because if you had, then you would have enough money You'd be to go up to the next, like you would yeah. be rich already. Yeah. And like I said, that's a very, that's a peculiarly American mindset that it's mm. like, it ties in how much money you have with like your moral fiber. Yeah. It's, it's always a, been that way. It's, I know. And it's yeah. like, it's very, very weird. That must be like some kind of like, um, I don't know where that comes from because that seems to be like Americans seems to be like the only people that think like well, that. Well, it's kind of a can-do thing. There's opportunities were pretty good here in, the, in in America, so there was always a way to make money. And if you weren't making money, you weren't making much money as that guy over there. It's because you're not doing the doing what he's doing. If you were doing what he was doing, then you'd have that money. Um, the thing is, is that Christianity played into that. And I think it had a lot to do with like Lutheranism and other kinds of yeah, it was religions. Like, yeah, I think that's where it to came where from. Hard work always resulted in good income, which that is not the case. It's not always the case, but a lot of, <laughs> sometimes it's true. I mean, it helps, it helps. but um, right. you know, but sometimes you, you just work hard and then you're still poor and you die. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you want to make a lot of money, you're not working harder. You're usually working smarter. And if you actually investigate how these guys in their 30s or 40s are making millions of dollars by the time they're 40, they're working in a team. And it's other guys who, who are right on top of cutting edge information. And they see money as a stream. And they know, well, this guy's doing this and that. And when that happens, money will fucking start flowing this way. If we borrow a bunch of money, like a couple million dollars, we'll set up this fucking thing. We'll catch some of that money and we'll triple our profits. And fucking, you know, and we'll all divide it back up. So they're working as a team. And they're working on very cutting-edge information. Things that the average person wouldn't even know was happening. You know. So that's how you really make money. It's kind of like in, insider trading. Or very well, much largely, like a, I mean, largely like you kind of already have to have yeah. money to you have make to have money, money. And then you have to have, a, you have, to have accurate, up-to-date information. If you about, don't, you're about, kind of fucked. You have to have accurate, up-to-date information. Daily information about what the richest motherfuckers in the world are doing right now. You know, if you know if you know what they're doing, then you can plan. And then they're doing stuff on the stock market because they know how it's going to affect that. Gramther says uh, Katie Holmes, Nicole Kidman, Penelope Cruz have said the same things about Tom Cruise and Scientology. It just all got to be too much. I could see that. I yeah. mean, shit. I was only around, you know, some of them like you know over the course of a work day over like eight or nine months. And I started feeling like I wanted to jump off a fucking building just yeah. dealing with them for that small amount of time. Right. So I can't imagine being married to somebody like that and like being around them all the time. Fuck that noise. No, thank you. Now, according to Scientology, the greatest Scientologist of all times was L. Ron Hubbard. They called him the source. He was the source of all their knowledge. The source of all the bullshit. The source of all the bullshit. <laughs> Which that's all of true. his all of his works are written down on these stainless steel tablets and they're inside these damn big fucking bomb proof fucking cases and they're stored in an underground facility out in the middle of the desert it has a big concrete walls around it and fucking machine guns and shit out in the middle of the goddamn desert to, to save L. Ron Hubbard's writings in case of atomic war or, or an Armageddon they've had guys stationed out there that have killed themselves because there's just nothing out there depression gets them basically like being in a prison maximum security prison but uh, they have these secret fucking bases Underground pieces to hide steel tablets. Without Are they even? I thought they were like platinum or some shit. No, it's not what it was. It was stainless steel 
with uh, I think it might have had some kind of coating on it, and they were fucking put in put them in some uh, carbon fiber carbon fiber cases and stuff. And it was real high tech shit. But it was I don't think it was platinum. Um. Meanwhile, people are starving to death in the world, and they're putting all this bullshit on fucking stainless steel tablets and burying them in the desert bunker. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off with that. Well, it makes it, me so mad. They have to because they did that. Kind of, it sounds ridiculous, but uh, it's because they have to do things that churches do. They can't hoard, hoard money, so they have to build things like that. Or you I have an idea. Pre- Send me you some. Pre- yeah, you can't. You or they would, or they wouldn't be a religion, basically. I might actually do some good with it instead of all the right. bullshit you guys are doing. Send me a couple so, more. So, L. Ron Hubbard was the source. He was the greatest Scientologist of all times. And uh, he died. Which, that kind of goes against what Scientologists said. What? Had. He wasn't supposed to die. Oh, he no, died? No, no, no. He dropped his he body. He dropped his body. So he they reworded that. Whoops. They, he just <laughs> dropped his body. He went into another dimension like to, a banana peel to further his work, his work. But he's coming back. And he's coming back with OT10, right? Or 9. Oh shit! See, because he remember. died when he was trying to write the next level, and uh, they, 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 some of them kind of had theorized or justified. Well, he had to drop his body to go into the other dimension to to get the knowledge that he needed in order to complete. I think it was OT nine or or, or whatever or, the next OT one was. And then once he came back, so on all these bases, there's always a house there, a big fucking mansion, and that's one of Elron Hubbard's mansions. And it's got everything laid out. His packs of cigarettes. I think it's cool cigarettes. Yeah, that's his <laughs> so cool. Which, what happens if cool goes out of business? Anyway, they got cool cigarettes waiting out for him. His <laughs> Scientology uniform. is probably single handedly keeping cool. them in business. Just, just they probably fucking, would. They buy the cool. They people. would. Arch, yeah, to keep. That cool might be going. why they're still. Because do you yeah. know anybody that smokes those? I don't. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think people <laughs> smoke cool. At the, um, they smoke cool out in the hood. Uh, but uh, he smoked them so they got a pack of cigarettes out for him his his, his uh, uh, uniform and his shoes are out and his bed's made and every day they make sure all in all these every one of these bases has an L. Ron Hubbard house or most of the good bases has a house that they got a fucking that they're keeping it for when he comes back and they totally believe he's gonna come back enter Tom Ross See, I show up. I Claim keep telling him that you should. I was like, you're a yeah. good bullshitter too. You could totally, you, to- you could, to- you could totally do that. Yeah. You could totally do that. Yeah, I just gotta do a more character stuff. Well, you say. <laughs> I'm back now. I know everything about OT10, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna write OT10, all right? I mean, Got it all just, here. Just whatever. Pull everything. Yeah. Pull anything out of here. Where's house? my pack of cools? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Got a light. No, I don't. No, you could totally do it. Yeah. Sure, well, you can't now because you just said it live on, on YouTube, but you know what I mean? I'll channel him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. They'll just call me the host. <laughs> the host. And then whenever they need to speak to L. Ron Hubbard, I'll call him forth. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you can be your regular self. Like, yeah, be my regular time. self. Yeah, part of his shit. Uh, yeah. And if they, need to, if they need to talk to Hubbard, I'll fucking... <laughs> Pop his ass out. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. What, do you do? what you do? You know. <laughs> you should. What you should like? I'm bossing fucking Tom Cruise around and shit. <laughs> oh my god, that would be fucking epic. Get Please. your ass up there on that mast, right? <laughs> Pull it fucking, tighter. Pull it tighter. Please fucking do yeah. it. Please fucking do it. That would be like so funny. That would be like the best fucking troll ever. Come here, and, Tom. And it would actually here, be a Tom. troll for good. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're riding that motorcycle too fucking fast. <laughs> You're going to break your fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we spent it. too much money on you, Tom. <laughs> I got Tom Cruise saying yes, sir, and shit to me. Yeah, see, that would be Wear awesome. a fucking helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Greenglass says, The miserable dwarf that runs scamatology today is far worse than fat ass... Uh, Elroy blubbered. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah uh, Miscavige is... Um, he's mean. He, yeah, he's a terrible person. He's mean. Yeah, he's well, according to everybody... Person. Well, it's not personal experience. I never met the man. He might be cool to me if I meet him because he, I'm short too and, we, and we're we're in a mafia. There is a short guy mafia. We, we treat each other well, okay? <laughs> so, you know, oh, come in. Yeah, me and Tom Cruise and David Miscavige, all these short motherfuckers. 
<laughs> Making fun of tall people. <laughs> Smoking a joint. It'd be fucking funny. It but, uh, yeah. <clears throat> He's, uh, according to, okay, the... According to everything I've been able to put together about Miscavige, he's protecting protecting the church, first of all. He's like an attack dog. If you come at the church, he just wants to destroy. It doesn't even matter who you are. He went after his own dad. Okay. Um, that's the first thing. <clears throat> that's his duty. You know, he's chairman of the board. So he's committed. <laughs> he cannot stand incompetence. Uh, which is going to be a big fucking problem in Scientology. Because those fuckers are incompetent. <laughs> Thank you, David June. What do you say? Broke up? bitch paying broke bitches. There you Thank broke you. Broke bitch fucking we giving money it. to other broke bitches. <laughs> on fucking thang- on Thanksgiving. Yeah, the day Thanksgiving before Thanksgiving Eve. <laughs> so, yeah, he doesn't like, he doesn't like fucking um, incompetence, and he's surrounded by incompetence, which would make him fucking mad all the time. Uh, he, um, he doesn't know that much about Scientology. Evidently, he doesn't have a lot of Scientology. Well, he doesn't have to. He I mean, have to. to be honest, he doesn't seem to uh, be very interested in Scientology. He's more interested in making sure that the organization continues. What? Yeah, seriously. Um, Pokey's uh, providing her two cents there. <laughs> I think. Uh, what was I going to say more about him? He's, it's not like he can leave, you know what I mean, and do something else. Anything he did would be a big step down. He grew up in that cult. That's all he knows. Well, and everybody knows who his ass is, too. Yeah, he doesn't have any education outside that cult. Um, he's a ruthless manager of it. He's basically, in military terminology, a fucking lifer. He's a lifer. That's you know, and if you knew what lifers are like, if you're ever in the army, it, it's just a lifer. Um, they're they're totally part of a system. They're part of that machine. He's probably no fun, you know. And, well, you can and, tell that yeah. just by looking at his angry little face. Yeah, and getting him out of that system, his meaning he was he's meaningless outside that system. So he has to stay in there. You can't go. Come on, man, let's get the fuck out of here. No, man, let's go. Come on, let's go get a drink, man. Fuck this shit. Let's yeah. be normal. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 <laughs> For he, five he, fucking he minutes. Wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't deal with that. He couldn't deal with that. Well, no, because, because he likes being, like, the he, top dog. Yeah, you know? he had to be in charge. See? Right. And if you got him out of that system, he he couldn't like be. Like, he's just a random he's like, I'm not, You're not equal to me. You know what I mean? To be like a general being saying, oh, I want to be a nobody. You know, because he's equivalent to being a general, really, if he was in an army. Which he kind of is. Um. I'm not a hater of these dudes. I, I actually kind of, I understand it. <laughs> I be, 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 <laughs> Being ex-military, I understand how that could happen to you. This is, they've been doing this for a long time, and it's almost kind of like an addiction. It's like an addict, addicts understand other addicts, you know. And it's kind of like looking at a bunch of addicts. They're addicted to this fucking artificial system. Uh, they're not really, they're not, they wouldn't have any importance without it. Uh, it they they have a bunch of conflicting fucking orders and instructions on how to do things, and it kind of slowly I think drives them crazy. So and I think Tom Cruise is a little, I think he's a good dude, but I think I think Scientology kind of put a lot of inner conflicts in into him. You know what I mean? Uh, but I think there's reward and and uh, punishment to it. You know, like there's pros and cons to it. The pro is is that he can have a lot of status inside the cult. He can feel good about his status. The con is is that other people don't understand it and they're going to attack him. And uh, he's not going to be able to move move around in normal society well. He has to be outside of society, which he thinks is like in an elite core is what he's going to... But he's missing out on a lot, you know. No, and no, knowing normal people really is advantageous to you You because that's, that's how you get grounded in, in what's real, you know, what reality is. These guys really aren't in reality. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. It's just, like, I mean, they have to understand that, like, the rest of the world just thinks they're a bunch of weirdos. Yeah, it's like, weird. Like, they don't take that seriously. Nobody right. takes that seriously. Right. And like, see, they might think they're all fucking, like, elite and shit like that, but yeah. nobody else thinks no. that. 
Now they think they're just weirdos, but they look down their nose at, at regular people. Like, right. well, you guys are just fucking. They call them wogs. Yeah. You know, which means fucking. Which, like I said, in the UK, that's a racist term. Yeah, but they just call <laughs> say wog. Just means uh, they had. They, I think it stood for it stood for something. It just meant, meant non Scientologist. It's kind of like calling somebody a kafir or a kafir or calling somebody a down goyim or something. You know, if I can. Uh, you're not one of us. You're not one of us. Yeah. And so, we're fucking special. Right. Yeah. Let me go get some more ice. Yeah, I'm I'm out too. All my melted. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it disappeared, but um, somebody asked how old Lisa McPherson was when she died. She was 36, actually. 36. Yeah, Tim is pointing out uh, WOG is, yeah, it's like the N-word in the UK. Yeah, I, di I did know that, actually, because um, I lived over there for a little while in the 90s. But, yeah, so that's why it's... And I'm sure they knew that. I, was, I mean, when they came up with that term, they must have known. The, like what the connotation of that word was it doesn't mean that in the u.s but it totally does like in the uk and that's pretty commonly known i would have thought um yeah camp guy said they must fleece their members like crazy get them to sign over their real property stocks real estate yeah i think they do actually um and i think in the case like in lisa mcpherson's case i think she had well she had her own bank account but then like she had a Scientology bank account that I guess they monitored that they like put money for her in it but they could take money out of it too you know what I mean yeah I you know I don't think I don't think David Miscavige really believes in Scientology no probably I not. don't think he does I think Tom Cruise does but I don't think David he does. seems to yeah. yeah I don't think I don't think Miscavige yeah but does. I don't think Miscavige believes in it no he's it's, just like some it, asshole that it's a business for him. Yeah, he's just running it like that, yeah. and he's it's made him rich, so that's all he worries about, I guess. I don't know how much personal money he has. He probably has a good amount of personal money, but it, the richness he actually lives in is that he can move around freely through all those damn bases like it's his personal property, even though it's, it's company property, basically, but it's church property, but he runs it like it's a kingdom. That's what I mean. But so does so Tom. It's... Tom Cruise does too. He could Tom Cruise could go anywhere he wanted, probably in there. And they'll do anything he asks. Yeah. Like all he has to do is be like, "Hey, can you pull up all this field of flowers and like plant yeah. all new ones?" Like, and yeah. then they'll do it. Yeah, Tom could pull in with one of his fucking brand new SUVs or something. Because I want the whole interior torn out of there. I want a custom leather interior with this and that. I want all kinds of high tech. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. And they and do they'll, it. They'll fucking he'll have him within a few days a totally new interior in, in a brand imagine. new vehicle and you know with fucking like high tech communication equipment so, so in case the fucking world ends he's got a satellite link up with fucking David Miscavige he can get his daily fucking Scientology download <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you see the stats you know seeing how, how, how much the planet has been cleared I mean Jesus Christ I would it's love like to have some shit like that but it the thing is, this it's centered around something I, I don't believe is I don't I, it's not real. Yeah, obviously. You know, if it was centered around something that was real. I think it'd be even cooler. It'd be real cool. Yeah, it's decidedly not cool like the way yeah. it is though. And honestly, I can't imagine. I don't know. I guess I've just never been the kind of person that like rolls up somewhere and is like, "Hey, do this for me and that and the other thing." Like I always feel like an asshole doing it. You know what I mean? Well, it's like in the military. It's just you, it's normal. Because there's different ranks and hierarchies and uh, well, I and, get that, but it's just like I don't know. I'm not that kind of person. There's a mission involved, so. and you're being told to do some things, and you know, hey, look, this has to happen. So you just go, hey, Rick, I'm coming out with this. Is what we have to do? Get this, and you get that. You can keep moving. All right, now, no. but you know, some of that shit's kind of personal. Okay, one, but you could, you could read, you could set it into a different way. You're gonna re-outfit my vehicle. It's gonna become a command vehicle, so I'll always be in contact with you. I want all new terrier in there. Make this shit handcrafted. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be fucking badass, so I can talk to you all in style. Like you deserve. Yeah. 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 He's like, so when you see me, I look fucking great. Okay. <laughs> Y'all don't get any of this shit, but you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You when should you be happy me, that I'm getting this yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you look at me, it should be great. You should feel proud. To look at me. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, that's that's. So that's you can how have the like commander you deserve. It. That's how that's how they talk about it. That's how they, that's how it is in the military. I know. Yeah. Well, there's lots. There's other like in the um, yeah. in the corporate world, it's like that too. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I've experienced exactly that also. Yeah. yeah. Where it's, and I'm just like, what the fuck line are you trying to feed me with that crap? 
Everybody knows, though. Get the fuck over Everybody yourself knows. with okay, it. Well, that's what I said. That's yeah. why I can't really see any of that kind of corporate yeah. crap. Because it's like everybody knows that it's bullshit, but it's like we all have to pretend that it's not bullshit. I'm just saying, I don't like that. I'm not It's as real as you make it. I don't want to make it real. I don't want it to be you real. I want it to, I want it to go Jedi away. I want it to go away, and I just yeah. want them all to it's shut real up. As you make it. <laughs> Hold on, Megan. Hold on. I got to become Conan. You got to become Conan? Oh my God, he's going wigs already? Holy shit. Don't let um don't let Pookie in there. She's been yelling to get in that closet, and every time I open the door, she walks in and she's like, "Well, there's nothing in here." I'm like, "Well, duh, that's what I told you." I don't know why she wants to get in there so bad. Okay. She's just gonna go in there and climb around on shit. All right, my hair's coming. Oh, you doing the hair? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I didn't wear my long black wig because it would have been exactly the same. You can tell which one's yours because it's all like um, raggedy. Yeah. Because you don't ever comb Makes it. Makes it beautiful. Because you don't ever brush it. Yeah. There you go. You don't have to brush it. You don't have to brush it? No, man. It's, it's a little low. It's natural. On your, on your forehead. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> need my comb. <laughs> you don't have a comb. What are you talking about? <laughs> Pookie's excited. She's like, he's got that thing on his head. He's got hair. <laughs> he's, got thing, he's got that thing on his head. She's like, can I play yeah, with this it? This is Pookie's brush. Can I play with it? This is Pookie's brush. Yeah, it's got, it's full of, yeah. that's Pookie's brush. Yo, it's got all Pookie back. hair in it. See, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. She picked up the brush and she got all excited. Yeah. She's like, oh boy, brushing is going to happen. No. Hugo says it's wig time. Okay, yeah, look, it's wig get time. On, get on, let's get on the case. Okay? Yeah, thank you. People finally. People are getting mad. Yeah. People are getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, whose fault is that? Well, it's not my fault. Yeah, it is. It's always your fault. There you go. <laughs> now it's like, now I'm, I'm like. this bitch to the club. Now I'm like distracted. Because you keep saying that, but it's like you never, yeah, never do. do it, you never do. It's yeah. like you're always like saying shit and it never comes to pass. It's just like all full of knots. Look at that shit. I'll yeah. It. Okay. Go ahead and do the show while so, I sit here and fucking beautify. <laughs> right. I mean, we have been talking about Scientology, to be fair. Yeah, like yeah. this most, of the, most of the time. So it's a Scientology show. Yeah. I just wanted to specifically kind of talk yeah. about the Lisa McPherson case. Yeah. Although, like, okay, so we're going to give like a little bit of background. So we're going to be talking about L. Ron Hubbard a little bit from earlier. Back in 1970, apparently. L. Ron Hubbard, at his, uh, like, advisement or whatever, he started to do um, these things that they were going to do, like, these essentially, like, human experiments, okay, on Scientologists who had, like, mental problems, right? Because he wanted to figure out, you know, how they could solve them with Scientology. So they took these Scientologists and they would like isolate them pretty much like they would lock them up and isolate and not let them like talk to anybody no one would talk to them and then they would go through like all this weird what they called like experimental processing so they're trying to figure out the best way to like have scientology like cure your mental illnesses right so they would have like auditors come in and like do these this particular protocol and all this other kind of shit and like the people would an after audit, an auditor for you people who don't know what she's talking about and when you're going to do confession they put you on a lie detector, and it's an auditor that asks you all these questions and reading the damn lie detector and writing it all down real quick. It's called an auditor. Like a confessor, really, is what it is. Okay. But, um, but, yeah, so they would put these people, like I said, in these rooms, and they wouldn't let them leave, like, even when they wanted to. So they were essentially, like, keeping them prisoner, kind of. And they would just, like, pepper them with questions, like I said, for hours and hours. Um, and actually, like, sometimes days. I think the experiments went on for, like, days sometimes. So they went through all of this stuff, and then uh, L. Ron, that's what he used to kind of write what, um, what the policy was going to be going forward, like within the Church of Scientology, like how you would deal with people that had mental problems, like psychotic breaks or something like that. Because obviously you can't, I mean, Scientologists, if you don't know, are like super, super against psychiatry or psychology of any, of any kind. So they didn't want anybody having to go to psychiatrists because psychiatrists are evil, apparently, like according to them. Well, it's their competitors. Right. The, yeah, exactly. Right. That's exactly what it is. They're, they're just mad because, you know. Well, I mean, there's evidence that psych psychology is just as fucking fake. Go ahead. Go ahead. David June said. Not uh, quite as fake, but it's fake. Too. Holy shit, I just realized 45 minutes behind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we started, what, like an hour and 20 minutes ago yeah. or something like that. Uh, so, yeah, basically, so they did all these experiments on these apparently unwilling people that were in the Scientology cult, but they, you know, I guess they didn't really sign up for that kind of shit. 
But so Elrond in 1974, um, he writes out what in Scientology is called a policy letter. Um, you know, that's saying like that's laying out their policy on things, obviously. And he said that from these experiments, these human experiments that they did, he had figured out how um, to cure psychotics and he had done such a good job of it that um, eventually psychiatry was going to be completely eradicated. Remember when that happened? Yeah. yeah no, because that didn't happen. Uh, so the process that he came up with, he termed it the introspection rundown. Yeah. And basically what they would do is they would take the person that was having the psychotic break or whatever um, and actually in Scientology, they don't call it like mental problems or psychotic, psychotic break or anything like that. They call it PTS type three. That's what they call it because they have to have fu a fucking word like that for everything. They always have to have everything. An acronym. Everything has to be an acronym or like yeah. a weird fucking sounding name. And they have like shit. And this used to piss me off too. It's like, they always have to have a word. They have that their own words for shit that already have words. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like, I don't know. It just like made me really. Well, irritated. it has to sound like militarese. Yeah. All right. Or cor it's it's still like corporate speak. Yeah. Is well, what it sounds like. Well, Elrond was military. Yeah. And and militarese has its own language. It changes over time, but it's a bunch of acronyms. The thing is, is the acronyms make sense when you're in the military because you can't say multiple multiple long range launch missile system or some shit like that. You know, so you're gonna use an acronym for that. Humvee is a, is an acronym. Hummer is based upon the acronym Humvee. Highly mobile, multi-wheeled vehicle. It just means it's like the replacement for the Jeep. Yeah, a wheeled vehicle. So we're using in the military. We're using the militaries and acronyms for a reason. It's real. Yeah. You know, but it's yeah, it's a real thing, and it's a quicker way of it's a quicker way of talking it. about right. something, right? B because you you know the word. Most of the words for equipment is a description. It's not really a name for it. You know, Hummer. Hummer comes from Humvee. Highly mobile, multi-wheeled vehicle. You're not going around and say, bring me one of them highly mobile, multi-wheeled vehicles. You know, so you're going to say, Get, give me a Humvee. You know, it makes perfect sense. But these guys, no. They're just pulling shit out Yeah, they're pulling ass. shit out of their ass. They're, well, they're, 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 it's, it's a pseudoscience, and they're making, they're making acronyms based upon pseudoscientific terms. But I think a lot of it is just to mask the fact that they're not working with anything. Yeah, exactly. And it's to make things sound more important than what they really are. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And I think that's why it pissed me off so much, because it's like... Well, because sometimes if you read something that a Scientologist wrote to another Scientologist, it sounds like complete and utter gibberish. Yeah. Like, I know what some of it means, because I knew them, and I worked at a place that was run by Scientologists for a while, so it's like, I know what some of the terms mean. But it still kind of just sounds like gibberish. I'm like, would you just please, like, talk like a fucking normal person? But they can't. Because, like you said, it makes them sound more important. Like there's more substance to it than there actually is, and it makes and it sets them apart too. Like so they can say all kind of shit without anybody knowing yeah, what they're saying. Yeah, it's a culture speak. Yeah, it is. It's just it's very irritating. So yeah, so if you're PTS type three, that means you're crazy essentially. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so what they would do, and you know, anybody that has anything that knows anything about psychiatry is probably, this is what you should not do like to, a, for a person that is, you know, having a psychotic break or whatever. What Scientologists decide to do is they're going to put you in complete and total isolation with no, uh, intellectual stimulation, no emotional stimulation. Uh, you're not allowed to really talk to anybody. If you do talk to people, they're not allowed to answer you. Yeah. Um, people will kind of come in and take care of your day-to-day -day needs, but you may not interact with them. And for some reason, they think that that's going to help you. That's the opposite. That's actually the opposite of what you should be it's doing. It's called solitary confinement. That's, yeah. And, and uh, They really think that's going to... Yeah, kind of like sensory deprivation. That'll drive you crazy. That won't fucking drive... That won't that's make what you I better. mean. It's just going to make it worse. What they thought was, is I kind of looked into what they believed. They believed that um, if you were going crazy, it's kind of like because you were overstimulated. So if you put them in solitary, they would get crazier, and then it all then it would stop. That they would even back out and become rational again. Yeah, that's kind of like a, that's like some Victorian shit. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like the Victorian shit. Yeah, like you get like through that. it. 
But that's yeah. not what actually happens. No. <laughs> uh, where at least it might happen a lot of a lot of times in the short term because the person isn't really crazy. They're just fucking pissed off because of some Scientology policy. So they punish them, put them in solitary, and they go, "Well, I better I better behave, or they won't let me out of here." Right. So then they get better. But a person who's really going crazy, put them in solitary, they'll go crazier. Yep. They'll detach even further from reality. Yep. And they won't have anything. And I mean, yeah. that's why I this no case, way to give, no way to bring them back. That's what I mean, and that's why this yeah. case is like so sad to me, and yeah. like just so fucking tragic because it was so avoidable. It was just so avoidable, and they just like fucked her over. So yeah, so no one's allowed to talk to this person, um, and apparently what this was supposed to do, like you said, this person was supposed to be in isolation with nobody talking to them, and they were supposed to figure out for themselves like what went wrong, like why they had this psychotic episode or whatever, and they would keep you in isolation until you were able to come out and explain exactly why you had gone crazy. And then they would let you out. But yeah. not until then. Right. Like, you had to be completely mentally stable after however long you were in there and explain, like, what had gone wrong. When a truly crazy person doesn't know what the fuck's going on, they're not going to be able well, to Well, yeah, them. that's kind of the whole point. I yeah. mean, that's... You have a psychotic episode, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Like, that's kind of the problem. And that's right. why you need other people to intervene and yeah. maybe help you figure it out. Right. You're not going to be able to figure it out. You're the one that got yourself into that in the first place. Yeah. Or like I said, you're you know, you're know not really aware of like what's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, get, you talk them down, you give them some sedatives, chill them out. Be normal, <laughs> try to get them to shake it off. You want them to be in a normal environment, and a lot, sometimes they'll come back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. not always, because sometimes, sadly, like it's yeah. too, it's, it's, it's yeah. bad, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Adriana C. said Tom looks more like Al Jorgensen than Conan, though. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, David June said Tom looks like Glenn Danzig's stepbrother who earned a management degree in prison. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a very specific and uh, also very accurate assessment. Yeah. yeah. Tammy said Tom's looking so pretty. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> then David, David June said, Is Tom a fucking princess? The coping is extensive. <laughs> He's a no, pretty, I'm trying, pretty trying to beautify the damn wig. Well, you, yeah. I Be mean, beautification. <laughs> Tom's getting beautiful. Yeah, Are getting you beautiful. really this drunk already? Hold no, on. no, no, no. Okay, I'm you're, not drunk at you're all. acting like fucking you're sober. Kind of drunk. No, really? fucking, so, oh, fucking sober as shit. Are you sure? Sober as shit. The way you say that makes me doubt. <laughs> makes me doubt your statement. Just you trying to bring introspection in on me. <laughs> Don't make me introspect. Yeah, okay? Just, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing an introspection. I'm a man. Run down. I'm a man. I'm not, uh, men aren't supposed to introspect. Okay. <laughs> That only leads to heartbreak. Yes, it leads to heartbreak. We're not supposed to be examining ourselves. We just look at shit. <laughs> Although I, I would argue that men not men looking, look at shit. looking at themselves is one of the main problems just looking at shit. in the world. <laughs> no, no, I've been there, man. When I was on that trend, I got that. No, it's, 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 it's dangerous. You become like a woman. What's wrong with that? They don't have any. They don't. We're, they're we're crazy. Not, we're not the they're ones. They're crazy. Uh, hey, we're not the ones out there being serial killers. Hello. <laughs> no, that's a different thing. Or like that's, shooting that's, up that's, places. That's different shit. Those that's mother, a dude thing. Yeah. They, okay. So don't call us way. crazy. It's just you know. At least we usually only harm ourselves if we get all like fucking crazy. We don't take a bunch of people out with us. They shouldn't shouldn't have fucked with them. Just okay. Don't fuck. They with them. didn't fuck with nobody. Yeah, fucked with them. It's just random. Should have left that man alone. Oh, so you're blaming victims now? Yeah, yeah, you should have left that man alone. You did something. No. You did something to him. No. Made him mad. No. Yeah. That's no excuse. All right, now back to the show. I'm mad all the time. Back to the show. But I'm not allowed to go Jenny's trying to reason that. with Jenny's trying to reason with me. You can't reason with me. Not reasonable. Oh, we're going back to that again. You huh? didn't know that? I think I liked you better when okay. you were on the other one than when you were on the show. <laughs> not, like not reasonable. This. David June said, I love you guys. Just, <laughs> Tammy said, "How sober is shit?" That's what I'd like to know. Man, you guys are asking too many dynamic guys. Tammy also said, "David, did you see the show last week where Tom was plastered?" Yeah, that's Ooh. right. That was a Friday night show. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you were just like barely coherent. Yeah, I, I don't even remember the show. <laughs> well, you sounded know, like most of the time you were just back there going. Uh, yeah, yeah you're just like doing that. Yeah. I was like, no, we were only on for that. like two hours, and I was just like, what the fuck? I'm nowhere near that. That's like three hours away. That's like three hours of drinking yeah. away. Because that particular night, I was at the biker bar. I was. That's what I mean. I was, he had been drinking I've been before drinking all the fucking show day. started. He had been drinking all afternoon. All fucking day. 
And then Jenny so. came and hung out. I was on a pole. Yeah. I was on a pole. All the old biker chicks were fucking loving it. At least as far as I can remember. I only danced for a few seconds, though, right? I don't know. I didn't really see anybody looking at you, but... Okay. No, a girl next to you. <laughs> oh, old okay. lady next to you. Oh, I wasn't looking at her. Yeah, yeah. She turned around and goes, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> she was also drunk. Yeah. Uh, all right, so yeah, so that's a little background on the on the you know this uh, purification rundown or isolation yeah, yeah. rundown or whatever it is that they do, um, which plays a lot into what actually ended up happening to Lisa McPherson. So Lisa McPherson actually joined the Church of Scientology in 1977 when she was 18 years old. Now, she actually joined uh, in where she then lived, and I think she was born there uh, as well. She was from Dallas, Texas. Now, apparently, I'm not sure what spurred her exactly to join Scientology specifically, but at first, she really seemed into it. Like, she thought that it helped her out a lot in her life. Like, I guess she had been in a kind of an abusive relationship with her boyfriend, and she said that the church, like, helped her get out of that. Um, kind of helped her meet more people, you know, get out and be more social, stuff like that. And when she got in there, um, you know, she had all the, you know, the job contacts and stuff like that. And that kind of helped her get um, a better job. So in 1993, the company that she was working for, which, like I said, is the same company that I worked for in the early 2000s, which is called AMC Publishing, which was basically like what they did was it was like a B, uh, like a business to business um thing where they would print out uh at least when i worked there i don't know if um this was different like back in the 90s but they would print out these packets of like uh like mail cards like you know those cards you get in the mail and you tear them in half and you can like send one back it was like that but they were selling insurance packages like to insurance agents that insurance agents would sell to the public you know what i'm saying so it was like bigger insurance companies being like hey we have this package of like life car blah whatever and then like here's this package that you can sell to the public then i know that's like sounds complicated but that's what they did so i basically my job was to like design like all these little cards you know that's basically it that you would mail to go through the mail so uh so yeah so she worked for amc publishing uh, and at that time, uh, it was owned by a woman named Benetta Slaughter, and that was uh, the same woman who owned it when I was there, and I actually met Benetta Slaughter a few times, uh, and her husband, I think it was her husband, David, who worked there as well. And uh, most of the people that worked there were Scientologists. I don't know if it was most, I want to say it was maybe like 50 to 75% of the people were Scientologists. Now, the company was actually in Dallas, Texas until 1993. But then they moved to Clearwater, Florida. That's because that's where I lived at the time. I worked there in 2002, I believe it was. Um, and that's where it was then. So, you know, everybody's that Clearwater, that's like their big headquarters, like the Scientologists. They own like a large part of the downtown, which, you know, a lot of people that live in the city are really all that happy about. So, uh, so yeah, so Lisa is having, you know, she seems to be doing okay. She's got this good job. She's just moved to a new place. She's going up the bridge, as they say. Um, and she even kind of like, I guess she was kind of, um, you know, reconciling with the boyfriend who I guess was abusive. And, uh, you know, so she did that for a while, but then it kind of seemed like, I'm not really sure like what the timeline of this was exactly, because I mean, she moved in 93, like to Clearwater. And then, you know, the thing that happened, uh, the horrible thing that happened was in 95. So, you know, so sometime over this two years, uh, she kind of seemed like she was getting disillusioned with the church. Like maybe it was all getting like to be a little bit too much for her. Some friends of hers later said that um, she had been talking actually about going back to Dallas and getting out of the church, like getting her life back, um, you know, getting her own job, like not being around them anymore. So she did seem to be, according to several friends of hers, she did seem to be thinking about getting out of it. So in June of 1995, Lisa actually went to, you know, the church higher ups or whoever you go to or these kind of problems and basically told them that she was having 
emotional problems, psychological problems. She'd been thinking about suicide and she really wanted to, um, she really wanted them to help her. Um, friends, she, again, she told her friends she thought she was going crazy. Uh, you know, she just wasn't feeling good. She was, like I said, contemplating self-harm and she really tried to go through the proper channels as they would say in Scientology, like to get some help with her problems. Um, so basically they did an introspection rundown on her, you know, cause that's their answer for everything. And it did seem to work at first, like it did seem to alleviate her depression somewhat. She'd still been doing like all the Scientology courses and shit like that. Like, you know, that's, they basically have you on these fucking courses you got to pay for all the time. And, uh, you know, you got in your little classroom. I had to do it too, even though I wasn't even in the fucking church. But when I worked there, they had the first half hour of the day you had to do that. Their little stupid classes, which I've talked about that before. It's like, it was like the stupidest shit ever. It's the biggest waste of time. Um, now, interestingly, uh, according to several different sources, uh, David Miscavige himself had actually, was actually managing her auditing sessions, right? So. David Miscavige himself. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if he was actually auditing her or if he, yeah, like, took a personal them. interest and was, like, looking at all the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, in September of 1995, um, they had this, one of their big, like, Scientology, like, circle jerks, you know what I mean? Like, in the big, fuck, you know what they are, you know. Yeah. Like, in the big auditorium or whatever. You're talking about that, it's kind of like the Oscars? Yeah. Yeah. Circle jerks, like I said. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> So yeah, basically like a big corporate rah rah. Yeah, so they had say so they had that, and the one that they had. Thank you, David June, BTK. Tell my friends you're gonna murder him. Looks like a wizard. What? I don't, know <laughs> I don't know if that was is is he asking you to do the BTK voice? You don't look like BTK now with that hair. No. <laughs> BTK would. What? I don't, what does he want me to do? BTK. I'm not, I'm not entirely like sure. Yeah, the, BTK, you, tell my friend you're gonna murder him. Oh, period. Oh, okay. Looks like a wizard. Who looks like a wizard? He looks. Y like either a, you look like a wizard, or your friend looks right. like, or the friend looks like a wizard that you're supposed to like murder. Ah, yeah. <laughs> now, now he's gonna get it confused with Elrod nah. Hubbard. <laughs> I know you're his friend and everything, but I'm gonna have to kill you because you look like a wizard. <laughs> you can't look like a wizard. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it right now. <laughs> David Jean says, threaten you'll kill Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, BTK. He was gay, you know. I think he actually might have been. Yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> he was gay. So. That's something BTK would just say. Yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah, like, and that was like the end that of the That was it, story. yeah. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to understand. You're uh, supposed to just be like, <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, he was gay. <laughs> Rather than like normal people going and well, that's what Scientology did all the time. I know <laughs> Scientology did that shit all the time. Well, they'd make if you piss them off, they'd make they'd build like a website against yeah, you and like gay. they'd say all this and you're gay. and yeah. some of the people were and they're just kind of like so yeah. Well, that's what they did about fucking. They were look. They were seeing the dailies, at, at fucking. Um, this is this is. Um, I think it was I'm trying to remember who it was. Which cult member said this? I don't, it wasn't it wasn't Rathbun. It was. Uh, Render, Mike Render. Mike Render. Mike Render said that that uh, Miscavige and some of the other ones would see like the dailies from the making of the movie uh, fucking uh, Battlefield Earth. Battlefield Earth, you know. And they were watching John Travolta, and they were like, well, "What's?" They were looking at each other like, "What's up with this? What's up with fucking John, man? What the fuck?" And the other guys, you know, what you know, he's out of ethics. You know, you know the deal. But it, it, when, you know what they're talking about is he's gay. He's gay. Yeah, he's That's out out mean. ethics. He's out ethics. That he's, means you're not doing Scientology. You're not doing Scientology right. You're not KSW. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't come out and say that he was gay. It's just that they all evidently that was they all knew and just the insider way to go at he's gay is when it came to John Travolta, they would just go out of ethics. Yeah. Out of ethics. I mean that's out of ethics means that you know he's unethical. Right. He's he's a sinner. But see, that's the thing. It's like, I wish that, you know, even if he was, I yeah. wish he would just come out and say that and just be that. It's like, I don't understand, like, why it has to be this he big. He can't confess to that. I know, I know. 
And I mean, shit, either. I I heard about this from because I my aunt, yeah, uh, she used to because John Travolta. I don't know if he still has one, but he used yeah. to have like a big house like a, with a lot of land in Port Orange, which is only like a few miles from where I grew up. And my aunt ran a salon, and he would in Port Orange, and he would come in there and get you know facials and manicures and shit like that. And all the all the people that work there like knew that he was gay. He's evidently like visibly outwardly gay. Well, that's what I mean. Like everybody that worked yeah. there like knew, and he wasn't going around like He's not hiding it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, and that, and she told me that like back a long yeah. time ago, like back in the nineties. But when he's around the church, he can't do that. Yeah. And uh, if he comes out, the church will fucking release all of his fucking um, confessions. All right, and they'll come out and with. Uh, you know, you were never a Scientologist and all that casting couch activity and you did this and that and, and you know, they might have something worse on him than that. That So he can't confess to that because if he confesses to that, he'll get kicked out of the church. And if you get kicked out of the church for confessing that, they're going to hit you with everything they got. You but see, the to... thing about it nowadays is I kind of feel like, one, people don't care about half the shit they think that people care about nowadays anymore. And two... I kind of feel like now Scientology, like most people kind of don't have that high opinion of it anyway. And I feel like now is probably like a good time to do it because if John Travolta just came out right now and said, yeah, basically this place, this, you know, church sucks or whatever. And then they say all this crap about him. I think it'll just only make people like more like endear people more to John Travolta and be like, man, those church people are assholes. You know what I mean? I think it would kind of go down like that. They might have something illegal on him. Uh, yeah, maybe. Might have, you know, he might but, have done something that's illegal that he's scared. Another thing is, is that he might like that church. That's another thing. Although somebody said, like, earlier, like, a long time ago, I think I didn't get a chance to comment on it, but um, somebody said that John Travolta was, like, seemed like he was trying to kind of, like, low-key distance himself from that. Like, he was selling some of his property in Clearwater and shit like yeah. that. Like, he was trying to get the fuck out. Which, like I said, I can't fucking That's all you him. have to do, really. Yeah. Um, Scientology just doesn't, doesn't want you to soil their name. If you slowly... Too late. <laughs> that's just the way they see it. Yeah. If you slowly just kind of fade away, they don't really seem to care that much. It's just if you come out and fucking say anything bad about them, or you say something bad about yourself, which might reflect badly on the church, they'll come after you. So that's probably the best thing he could do. It's just kind of fade out. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Tom... Tom Cruise, he's fucking wed to that church. He's actually probably second in command. They say, you know, he's, him and David Miscavige, that's like his church. I don't think he's officially second in command, but probably in effect, he's probably second in command. Yeah. Um, he can't go anywhere. And I don't think he wants to. I think he likes that. I think he likes Scientology. What it offers him. Because yeah, he, he, he got a good really experience. Be, right. He got a good experience from them, and I think he is a believer. I think he, I think, uh, I think, I think Scientology, what he, what they call Scientology training, I think it helped him. Um, because he got, he didn't get run of the mill Scientology shit. He got fucking good shit, all right, and shit that's probably not even in the book. They probably just fucking taught him a bunch of cool shit that has nothing to do with Scientology. You know, there's no telling. Now he got in there. He said that he, he said he had problems with dyslexia, but his girlfriend got him in there. I don't know if dyslexia is a code word for not being able to read. I don't know. He might have fucking yeah, taught how to read, because they said that he would memorize scripts. That he would memorize. He could hear a script and memorize the whole thing. Was he illiterate? Is that what they're trying to yeah, tell us? Yeah, maybe. That they taught him how to read. Thank you again, David June. Yeah. <laughs> Which is no shame in that. Fucking, you know what I mean? Some got some dudes that their backgrounds were, were that they never really got a chance to read. Maybe they had unstable family life, never really got to a school or something. Yeah, I mean, you, you never know? know what anybody's like backstory is. Right. So it's like you can't just like shit on people just like yeah. So he might have learned. He might have like learned to read late. Right. You know. Which, like I said, it happens. Yeah. You know, some people don't have like uh, perfect upbringings and. They had some bad shit happen in their life, you know what I mean? He's intelligent. Tom Cruise is intelligent. Yeah. Very intelligent. So it's not a reflection on that, just that I have a feeling he had an unstable family life and an improper education. 
and didn't have good reading skills. That's what I think. That he maybe could read a bit, but just not real good. Yeah. And that they completed his education. And uh, he can't say that, so he's got to go to bat for him. And then I think they did a bunch of other stuff for him. They built whole complexes to him and his girlfriends. Yeah. So they did a lot to seduce him. And he got high in that church. So I think he had a good experience. But he was just one person out of fucking all those people, you know. And there are some things that were in Scientology trading that sound like they could might be useful. Because they're close to kind of like Robert L. Shook's fucking hardball training, sales training techniques, which... Yeah, you know, how to, in a way, kind of dominate somebody by asking them questions, to filter them down certain pathways. Little tricks and stuff, like you'd learn out of a carnival. Like what something a mentalist might, might learn. So, they may have shit like that in there, in Scientology trading. So, I don't laugh at everything in there, just a lot of it. Well, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff in there, yeah, probably would help you, especially, yeah. like, in the lower levels. Yeah. You know, not all of it's bullshit, but I think the stuff that's not bullshit was stuff that was just taken from, that was e either just common sense or stuff that was taken from other sources. These are people that believe in mind powers. Yeah. Okay, so they might be teaching things like that, like, it's not in the OT training and not in certain manuals, but they might have some side schools, some special schools to where a fucking circus mentalist or something went in there and taught them how to do mentalist tricks. And evidently some of that works. You could trick somebody by asking them weird questions. Saying things to them and planting subconscious imagery in the mind based on the words. Some of it worked on me through television. Knowing what was underneath a damn... Like this, they had a damn... A box, and the guy's telling you something. And he says, you will know what this is, and I'm done with it. And fuck, I knew it was a tricycle before he opened it. It turned out it was a tricycle. Because he had been saying things that rhymed with tricycle. Yeah, they're like planting little suggestions. Planting suge suggestions yeah. in your head. Yeah, it's yeah. not as hard to do as you Right. Think. So Scientology would be interested in something like that. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if they have little courses like that. They teach to select high level select like guys like Tom Cruise, basically. Yeah. You know. And you might check back here. What rhymes with what I want? I'm going to keep saying this and, and I'll suggest it into that person and they'll do what I say. You know yeah. what I mean? It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you have to be kind of good at it, like, so that people don't, un like, don't know what you're twig doing. on to what you're doing. Right, yeah. But, you know what I mean? Like, you have to be kind of slick about it. Right. Because <laughs> if you're too obvious, they'll be like, well, you know, yeah. what? they wouldn't be like that. Um, so, yeah, so where was I? Okay, so um, early September of 1995. Uh, David Miscavige himself, apparently, at one of the circle jerks, like I said, yeah. um, declared Lisa a clear. Yeah. Um, and this is only like a couple months before what happened happened. So, yeah, they said she was clear, which means, yeah, that's like your big thing. That's what you want to achieve in Scientology. We get All... one... What? Super yeah, I said oh, that said... a long time ago. Okay. I said that a long time ago. All right, just Way ahead of you. Um, so yeah, so she was very, very happy about that, like writing letters to her friends, like, oh, it's the most exciting thing that ever happened, she's clear, all this other kind of stuff. But then, um, only about a month went by, and she seemed like she was kind of getting back to where she was having depression and things like that. And, uh, so she went back to the church for help, like, asking with, about her, like, psychological problems and stuff. And they did all these kind of, you know, auditing and confessionals. She had to, like, every, they have a thing, too, where you have to, like, write everything down. Like, everything, you write down everything that, that you fucked up on and all this other kind of shit. So she had to do all of that. Um, and she was kind of thinking that this wasn't really helping her, of course, as it wouldn't. And she basically, again, was, like, calling friends and saying, um, yeah, I think I'm going to move back to Texas. I don't really want any part of this anymore. Um, and she had also told her mom that, you know, she didn't really want to be in anymore and that she was probably, like, having a hard time at her job, which, like I said, was all Scientologists as well. Now, uh, in November of 1995, uh, she actually went to a trade show with a bunch of other people, like, from the company. And it was in Orlando, uh, you know. And I think that was kind of the first time that a lot of people, like, noticed that she was acting strangely. Like, several people noticed that she was acting odd. And that she was acting so odd, as a matter of fact, that one of the other co-workers 
um, kind of took her away from the trade show early, like took her back to Clearwater. Um, she was able to kind of do a few more things. Like she was volunteering with this, um, you know, Christmas thing that they were doing, but she was still like acting real weird. And so people were kind of like, huh, that's not usually what she's acting like. So then comes November 18th, 1995. Lisa is driving her Jeep Cherokee uh, toward downtown Clearwater. Now, up ahead, like in the street, there'd been kind of like a fairly minor, like a motorcycle accident. So the traffic was kind of like stopped behind it while they were clearing the accident. Now, Lisa um, ended up running her car into the car in front of her, like had um, like a boat on the back of it. Like, you know what I mean? It was pulling yeah. a boat. So she, her, she ran her car into yeah. the boat motor. Okay, yeah. Um, now, it was a minor, minor, minor accident. It's like there was no damage to the boat, um, and the driver of the car was basically like it didn't feel like anything. Um, now, the grill of her Jeep was a little bit fucked up, but that was about it. There was no injuries. There was not any massive damage, nothing like that. Now, there was a paramedic who was up at the motorcycle accident, like up ahead, and she looked back and she saw this other accident, this little fender bender. And so she came over uh, to Lisa McPherson, who was in the car, and said, are you okay? And Lisa said she was fine. So um, the paramedic asked her a few more questions. You know, are you sure? Do you need to go somewhere? Do you need to see somebody? And Lisa said no, that she was okay. So the paramedic had a release and said, okay, well, you have to sign this, um, you know, to say that you're refusing medical attention or whatever, just so they can't get their ass sued later on. And then she just like walked off and went back to the initial accident, right? So as they're packing everything up and getting back in the ambulance, the ambulance driver looks back in the back and sees Lisa walking down the street, taking off her clothes. And she starts walking down the street like right by the ambulance, like completely naked. So at this point they're like, okay, well clearly she's not okay. So the paramedic just gets out of the ambulance and kind of like takes her around to the back of the ambulance and, you know, covered her up with a blanket and stuff. And is basically like, you know, what's the matter? Now Lisa says, I wanted people to think I was crazy because I need help. I just need someone to talk to. That's what she said, according to the paramedic. So they took her to the nearest hospital, which was Morton Plant Hospital in downtown Clearwater. So, you know, obviously they want her to get checked out because, you know, there's, there's something that matter. Now, the orderlies in the hospital said that she seemed very distant and that she was acting what they called robotic. Um, she didn't look like she was hurt physically, like they checked her out and they didn't look like there was anything wrong with her. But they were like, well, she's acting very strange. So they decided they were going to admit her, like, you know, for overnight observation. Not too long after that, though, a whole bunch of other Scientologists started showing up in the emergency room. Apparently what had happened was that Benetta Slaughter, who owned the company that Lisa worked for, she had been driving past where the accident was and she saw Lisa's abandoned car like on the side of the road. And she asked like the cops or whoever was there, like, where did they take that person whose car that is? And they said, oh, they took her to the hospital because she was acting funny. So Bonetta told a bunch of the other Scientologists, hey, go to the hospital and get her, like see what's going on with that. And then here's the crazy thing. And like I said, I met Benetta Slaughter a few times because she was, you know, the CEO of the company that I, that it was the same company. Like she was still there when I worked for it. Um, she was basically like, well, I'd go myself, but I was working on this charity thing and I'm all covered with paint and I look awful and I don't really do hospitals anyway. Like she said some shit like that. I'm like, mm, yeah, that sounds about right. That tracks. But yeah, so she wouldn't go. So she sent a bunch of her minions like to go to the hospital and see what was going on. Well, I didn't on. think it was a big deal at this point. With Lisa. Yeah, I yeah, I'm not really sure. So I think they was I think there was like a group of like eight Scientologists like went to the hospital to like see what was going on. Now they all Nobody pretty, knows this chick's gonna die. She's just walking around from their point of view, probably would look like throwing a temper tantrum. Yeah. Taking her clothes off and he we need help. We don't have time for this shit. That's what they're that's that's what yeah, they're pretty to much. Think right, yeah. And they were afraid, the Scientologists were, they wouldn't really leave her side. They were kind of like crowding around her because 
they were afraid that because she'd been acting strangely like out in public that they were going to call a psychiatrist and that's like the worst thing ever from like a scientologist point of view they think like scientologists like the fucking devil so they wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to happen so they did a physical checkup which seemed to be fine like she seemed to be physically fine but then they brought in um a nurse now he wasn't a psychiatrist or a psychologist or anything like that he was a clinical nurse but he had had a background like he'd worked in a psychiatric hospital previously so they brought him in to you know see if she was like to kind of assess her mental state right um and he said that he went in there and like a bunch of the church members just like crowding around her now he managed to kind of get them out of the fucking way for a minute so he could ask lisa like look are they you know keeping you prisoner or like do we need to do something um and she indicated at that time that she wasn't being coerced by them although i think that some people at the hospital like thought maybe this wasn't the case because the way she was acting was like very very weird um but they did say in the end that like lisa seemed kind of like bummed out and she said she wanted to leave with them like with the other scientologists and the head doctor there was like well you know there's nothing doesn't really seem to be anything the matter with her and she's not acting crazy enough for us to like baker act her or anything like that which is you know what happens usually if you're a danger to yourself or others so like well she's not doing that um so there's no and she's physically fine so there's really no reason for us to detain her so if that's what she wants she's an adult um so that's what happened now uh interestingly like i said um several of the staff at the hospital that interacted with Lisa or like kind of saw her, a couple of them did get the impression that she was a prisoner of these people, like the way she was acting. But like I said, there wasn't anything legally they could do to like keep her there. So after this, um, the, the other Scientologists, the little Scientology gang, they drove Lisa to the Fort Harrison hotel in uh, downtown Clearwater which was only like a few minutes away from the hospital. So they put Lisa into room 174, um, which was kind of like toward the back of the hotel. And they basically said, oh, okay, she's, you know, like I said earlier, PTS type three, which means like she's gone crazy. And they said, okay, well, we're booking her into the hotel and she, we're doing an introspection rundown on her, which means that we'll have somebody look after her like 24 seven, but no one is allowed to talk to her or interact with her because she's got to sort her shit out. That's basically what they were doing. So they start putting together the little, you know, crew of people that are going to watch over her. Now the woman that was in charge of this clusterfuck, let's call it that, was named uh, Janice Johnson. Now, interestingly, Janice Johnson did have a medical degree and she had, um, she had previously had a license to practice in Arizona, but it had been revoked. And then after she moved to Florida, she never bothered to get a medical degree here. So she actually was not legally, uh, allowed to practice medicine in Florida, but you know, that clearly didn't stop her. So, uh, so yeah. And the thing about it too, was that all of these other people that they had supposedly like looking out for Lisa, like, you know, taking care of her, um, most of them didn't really have any medical training of any kind. Uh, one of the women, uh, named Judy Goldsberry Weber, she actually was a nurse, but, um, the other crew like didn't want her helping out because... I don't know. I guess they thought we don't want any like real medical intervention or anything like that, but she was a nurse, but the other people didn't really have any clue like what to do about any of this. So, um, so everybody would watch her like in shifts. Right. And then like, they'd have to write a report at the end of it. So people would be, would watch her like 24 seven, like I said, but no one was allowed to talk to her. Like, even if she talked to them or like asked for help or anything like that, you were, specifically not allowed to answer her because like i said she was supposed to be sorting her own shit out you're not supposed to interact with her at all like even if she talks to you um and there was a security person outside the room like at all times and basically they were just gonna do this until she um magically got back to sanity again that's what they were gonna do they were just gonna keep her locked up in this room and not talk to her that'd make it worse well Spoiler that's alert, what that's what happened. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, she wanted to talk to somebody. You, you'd have to fucking talk to her. 
Yeah. They made it worse. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, and clearly, either because she was going crazier or because she was just trying to get out of this situation or she thought if she escalated things that maybe she would get some help from someone someone else other than these chuckle fucks. Yeah. Um, so, she, so Lisa started acting out. She would start, like, people would come in and she would hit them. She'd start, like, acting crazy and, like, screaming, um, take her clothes off. Like, she would shit in the bed. Yeah. Um, they'd try to feed her. She'd spit it back at them. All this kind of stuff. She was basically just, like, fighting them every step of the way. Like I said, I don't know if this was because she was actually having a psychotic break or if she was just trying to act as crazy as possible because she was hoping that they would take her someplace where she could get some actual help. Maybe both. I kind of suspect it was, a, you know, a little from column A, a little yeah. from column B. It might have been that. Frustrated as fuck. That's, yeah, and I mean, you can't blame her. You know what I mean? So, right. So they're just kind of, like, waiting around for her to, like, so they're just, like, taking care of her, quote unquote, but she's just, like, freaking out and, like, doing all this stuff. A lot and, of times when a person does this shit is because they know shit isn't right. The people around them are fucking tell, saying it's okay, but then you, it doesn't—it doesn't feel right to them. It's like, nah, right. This isn't right, man. And then all of a sudden they go, "Am I crazy or are they crazy? Maybe I'm crazy." So then they start blaming themselves. But what it is is they're around a bunch. She's around a bunch of chuckle fucks. She's around a bunch of. I mean, yeah, yeah. She's probably like the only sane motherfucker she's in there. Pretty sane, right? Yeah. She's going. She's having a moment of lucidity. She's like, "This life isn't for me. I need to get out of Scientology." But there's nothing in her realm of experiences you know what i mean she doesn't know how to leave scientology so that's gonna gonna cause a lot of problems you know what i mean because i'm telling so, you i'm like pretty aware of yeah. like i said even just working around them yeah for and it wasn't all scientologists like not everybody that worked there was scientologists a lot of them were yeah but it's like even just working around them and being in that environment um you know if for a work day or like a work week even that, like, after a few months, I started to feel crazy. Yeah. You can only lie and gaslight for so long. Eventually, reality doesn't match up with what you're being told, and you can't deny it. You know what I mean? That fucking... That what they're telling me is lying. But some people have very good imaginations and, like, role-playing fucking abilities. So they can stay... In, in, in the fantasy world. They can, they can, they can continue living the dream. I but guess. some people can't. Yeah. And that, I think that's what was happening here. She realized that she's being lied to. And the world isn't like what she's being told it is. And she's tr she wants out of Scientology is what it is. But that, that, but that thought hasn't fucking dawned on her yet. Because she's a believer, you know? Yeah. So there's a bunch of conflicts and shit. Which, like I said, might have right. fueled like, why she was acting that what way. What she needed is she needed to talk to a normal person. Yeah. Who understood what Scientology was. Yeah, like who, somebody that had yeah, gotten out. Yeah, and then somebody who could fucking go, no, this is what this is what's happened. This is what they're telling you, and that's not the way it really is. And no, you're not crazy. You're just starting to realize that they're full of shit. You need to come out of the church. You know, it'd be shit like that. That's know? why I mean, she needed it help. She needed like a yeah. deprogrammer. Yeah, it's not just Scientology. There's fucking lots of fucking religions and cults are like this, where some of the members are like they just. They just don't have the mental flexibility to fucking believe the bullshit anymore. You know, that's what she's doing. And they can't help her. And she doesn't really know what help would look like anyway. So she's freaking out in that fucking cell, fighting him. Because she's frustrated. Yeah. What you do is you fucking throw her ass out. out Maybe, I think field. that's what she was hoping would happen, I think. Throw her ass out in the fucking field, clean her up, put her in some civilian clothes, let her listen to some music. You know? Talk about something other than the cult. Watch a movie. And then fucking, you know, get him to open up over time. But you can't hit him with a bunch of fucking anti-Scientology stuff. They'll reject it. They're not ready to hear that. You just got to get them away from it. Yeah, because so, a lot of times if you just come out and be like, oh, they're crazy and stuff, they'll they double might, down on right, the shit and right. then they'll run back to yeah. it. Like, they see that. And like I said, cult deprogrammers will tell you that kind of stuff, too. You got to, like, yeah. ease them out of it. Get yeah. them, actually have them. Get them doing something. Get them way. doing normal shit yeah. and hanging around normal people yeah. and, like, being happy. Right. And then they won't need that shit anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Doing something that's totally unrelated to the cult. Right. Just, but yeah, like step by step. that's kind of like the sad thing. So there's yeah. like other, so there's reports, like they said at one point that they actually, like they had two women 
Um, and I don't know if one of them was her roommate, who, like I said, I worked with at the company because she was still there when I worked there a few years later. But um, they, like, kind of, ha one of them had each arm, and they took Lisa, like, back to her apartment, I'm presuming, like, to get more clothes or something like that. And, like, the apartment manager saw them and said, man, she looked like hell. Like, she could barely walk and her hair was all fucked up and everything like that. So, yeah, she was just, like, not, she was just, like, really deteriorating. And, like I said, she was just acting crazy. But, you know, understandably, understandably acting crazy. Now, um, they also said, yeah, I'm kind of, like, reading, because all these reports didn't come out until later on. They actually do have a lot of the reports other than the last three days and before she died, and that's, we'll get into that in a little bit, but talking about having, her having bruises all over and everything like that. Um, this one day, this is, okay, this is really weird. So, um, on the 24th, which I guess was, like, the sixth day that she had been, like, locked up in this room, I don't know if she was locked in there or she just couldn't leave because they had a security guard outside. I guess they didn't lock it because they had to go in and out, like, to feed her and stuff. What ended up happening on the sixth day was that, I mean, she'd been acting crazy the whole time. Like I said, she would, people would come in and she would hit them. She was, like, like I said, shitting in the bed, just all, doing all that kind of stuff, spitting food at people, throwing shit, doing stuff like that. But this one particular morning... She actually, like, um, she got up out of bed and she had, nor she was, I don't know if she was clean, but she had, like, normal clothes on. And then she opened the door to the room and the security guard was sitting there. And she talked to the security guard and he said she talked, like, normal. And said, she said what she said to him was, hey, you're not CMO. That means Commodore's Messenger Organization. Like, okay. so he, so he wasn't like a higher authority, like a higher ranking. Yeah. He, he was a, he was like a trainee or something. Right. And he's like, um, yeah, you're right. I'm just like a trainee or whatever. And then Lisa said, according to him, you can't tell me what to do. And then he said, you're right. Um, and then he was like, kind of, he's like, oh shit, I'm not supposed to be talking to her because that's kind of like one of the rules. But he was just like, so flabbergasted that she had just like walked out and was acting and talking kind of normal for a change. Um, and also there's like, there was supposed to be somebody in the room, like watching her and they didn't know like where they went. And basically, so he just kind of like, you know, pushed her back in the room, like gently. And then basically what she said then, when she said, I just don't know what's happening. And then he realized that he wasn't supposed to be talking to her anymore. So he stopped talking to her. And then she basically said, could you help me? I need help. And then he wouldn't talk to her anymore because he realized he wasn't supposed to. So basically like shut her back in the room. So, you know, later that same day, even though she'd been acting normal earlier, um, the head of security was called in because Lisa was acting out again, like being really, really violent. Um, actually one of the women that came in that was, you know, trying to feed her or change her or whatever. Um, you know, Lisa was smacking her, like, you know, kind of hitting her. And, um, you know, she was kind of like, she'd also like thrown a bunch of like some breakable shit. So there was like broken glass all over the floor. And so they had to have somebody come in and like sweep the glass off the floor and shit like that. And also like one guy came in, it was kind of trying to like restrain her and she grabbed his tie and then pulled the pen like out of his pocket and was going to like fucking stab him with it. So she did that too. Um, but basically they kind of like restrained her. Right. And then they were like, okay, we'll just get the glass off the floor, like sort all this shit out. So at this point, um, they decide she'd been in there a week and they're like, well, she doesn't seem like she's getting any better. And she's, you know, physically violent. Every time somebody goes in there, she starts like beating the shit out of them or like throwing stuff. And so then they decide they're going to sedate her. Um, so basically what they did was they took like orange juice and then put like Benadryl and shit, like crushed up Benadryl in it. And then they put, would put it in a turkey baster and then, like, force it, like, down her throat, like, to put her to sleep. <laughs> so they did that. Um, because she, like I said, because every time they went in there, they couldn't do anything because she kept, like, freaking out and, like, throwing shit at them. Um, and basically, and she hadn't been sleeping either. Like, she was awake all the time. So they were starting to drug her. Um, they said that she's just in there, like, talking, screaming, hitting things. Um, and also they said that she... They had to come in and, like, um, kind of sedate her a little bit so they could cut her fingernails because they said that she was scratching herself. She was scratching other people. Uh, she had, like, shit under her fingernails. Yeah. 
Like, so they had to, like, soak her hands and, like, cut them and right. cut the cut them short and shit like that. So, you know. Losing her fucking mind. Yeah. Well, like I said, not, not surprising. Yeah. So, November 28th, um, you know, she, like I said, she'd been in there for more than a week at this point. And they said at this point, well, it seems like she's calming down. I'm guessing because she's just getting sicker and sicker. And getting tired. She's getting tired. Well, and also yeah. she hadn't really been sleeping all that yeah. well. She hadn't been eating very much. Uh, she'd mostly been like refusing to eat. So she was probably like, she was like losing weight and stuff. And then they started like giving her like magnesium shots. Um, some Why magnesium. Who knows? It's one of their like fucking witch doctor things. Yeah. Um, you know, they kind of managed to get like some protein shakes down her sometimes, but like a lot of times she's like I said, she wouldn't eat. Um, but they never once until much, much later, they never once called a doctor. They never once called an ambulance, nothing. Like I said, that's not what they, they don't do that. They well, don't they're do that. following Scientology protocol as yeah. per L. Ron Hubbard on how to cure somebody from being crazy. Yeah. Which, uh, solitary confinement is not a way to cure somebody from being crazy. Yeah, just a pro tip. That can drive somebody crazy. That's a torture. Solitary confinement. Yeah, they use that in prisons for yeah. as a punishment for a reason. Yeah. So yeah. you know. Making it insane. Yeah. So she's basically this poor woman who obviously has some issues. Although, like I said, a lot of her behavior was probably predicated upon like the situation that she was put in, not so much, you know, her own mental problems, I would imagine. But so basically they never call a doctor. They never consult like any medical professional or anything like that. You just have all these dumbasses doing whatever, like just following Scientology shit. Like I said, spraying Benadryl down her throat, giving her magnesium shots and like not talking to her. And they're wondering why it's not working. It's not working. Um, so yeah. And at this point, like I said, they, they said she seemed to be from this point forward, she seemed to be like calming down. Cause like I said, she had lost a lot of weight. Um, you know, she was probably getting tired. Like you said, she was just like losing it. And, um, you know, they tried to force feed her at some point, but she wasn't having it. Uh, could have been too that she was just basically trying to die, honestly. Like a suicide, yeah. Like a like a slow suicide, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know. And so, at this point, uh, December second, she's gotten a lot weaker, obviously, but was still like hitting people that came in there. And um, she had. They said that she had. Um, one of the one of the caretakers said that she had scratches and abrasions all over her body and her elbows and knees uh she had pressure sores on them so there's that uh the 15th day so she's been like more than two weeks she's been in this fucking room um she was sleeping a lot of the time and was basically too weak to stand up and um couldn't like she basically was just like peeing and shitting in the bed she couldn't she was incontinent um, but they still, the Scientologists still kept doing the same shit. Now, how long has it been now? Uh, 15 days. Not 15 long. days. Okay. Not, a little bit over two weeks. Yeah. Okay. So. That's not long when you think about it. No, That's but I long. mean. If, if, She's going crazy. They should have got her. And it's a diet. long time if you haven't slept or eaten or yeah. anything like that. It's a pretty long time. I would have given her a bunch of sedatives and knocked her out. That's what I would have done. Well, they did, but. Yeah. Didn't work. I mean, it worked to an extent, but yeah. like I said, I don't think they knew what they were doing. They probably didn't even know, like, dosages or anything yeah. like that. Like I said, they didn't ask. None of them yeah, had they, any they, medical knowledge. Yeah, and it wasn't... It wasn't they didn't know what they were doing. And it, and it wasn't an injection. They tried to make her drink it. Yeah. I had to shot her ass up with some... <laughs> some kind of a, you know, bunch of value, maybe. Yeah. We're yeah. still on, right? Because it's like it, I haven't had we haven't had any chat in a long time, and that's unusual. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. We seem to be on. Oh, okay. I was just over wondering here, because here, yeah, because sometimes yeah, sometimes when that happens, is that it means on we're, top chat or are you on live chat? I'm on live chat. I'm always, okay. I always change it. Okay. I just I mean it could be like I'm that happens sometimes, chat. but okay, no, I'm on live chat. There's a, there's more now. Oh, okay. So maybe mine's just behind. You're, yeah, mine's Put, just behind. I think you're on top chat. No, I'm not. It says yeah. live okay. chat right okay. there. Right. I can see. <laughs> okay. yeah, I can they, see. They're just not saying anything. We're being boring. Yeah. <laughs> or, or being real interesting and they're not saying anything. Not oh, okay. Talking. Yeah, Ben says still live. Okay. Yeah, 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 I just want. I was just making sure because I, sometimes if I don't get a chat like for yeah. a really, really long time, that means I'm lo that I lost my connection and didn't wasn't. No, right, right. Um, but yeah. So, yeah. So she's still, like I said, refusing to eat. 
And uh, basically, this, okay, so December 5th, which like I said, I guess that's, this was like the last day, I guess. This was the 17th day. So two of the women that had been caring for her, they were giving her a bath when um, they said her sphincter relaxed. What? Which is, that's never a good sign. Yeah. Right? Um, now, one of these women that was taking care of her actually knew that this was a bad sign because she actually had some medical training, unlike oh, yeah. the rest of, the, of these other idiots. So she's like, okay, um, this is really bad. We really need to take her to the emergency room. Like, at least somebody, finally. Too late, but okay. So they're like, yeah, she needs medical care, like, immediately. So she calls up the Janice Johnson, the lady that was supposedly, like, in charge of this shit show. Um, but it took two hours for this Janet, Janice Johnson person to show up to see what was going on. Because I'm sure she had really busy Scientology shit to do. And she comes there and she's like, oh yeah, I guess Lisa's really dehydrated. And also she might be septic. Now, she calls up a, an actual doctor whose name is Dr. Minkoff who was also a Scientologist. He was a real doctor. I will give him that. But he was also a Scientologist. Now, he had um, previously prescribed drugs to Lisa, but without seeing her. Like, he was just doing it, like, sight unseen, like, from a distance, which is kind of a big no-no. Now, this doctor was working at a hospital that was 45 minutes away. Now, the nearest hospital if you'll remember, was Morton Plant Hospital in downtown Clearwater, which was only a few minutes from the hotel. Guess which emergency room they went to. The one that was 45 fucking minutes away because they knew that the doctor that was on duty there was a Scientologist. They thought they could trust him. He could keep it silent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they put this poor woman in the backseat of the car, laid her down in the backseat of the car, and drove past three emergency rooms and finally got to this one that was 45 so minutes a, away. So it was an extra half hour of driving. Yeah. Actually, actually, more than that. It was an extra 40 minutes. Extra 40 minutes? Because the closest hospital was like five minutes away. I wonder if 40 minutes would have made the difference between life and death with her. It might have. Uh, it might have. It might have been too late. I mean, it, it very well might have yeah. been. I mean, there's really no way of knowing right. because it's too late now, like I said. Um, I mean, she was still alive when she was in the car, but they said that she was kind of like deteriorating, like yeah. all the way there. Just because the person's alive doesn't mean you can help them. Well, sometimes I know that, but I'm just saying, far. I'm yeah. just saying that there's yeah. no way of knowing that now. Right. If they had gone to the nearer place, like she might still be alive. She might not. They might, it might've been too late. Like I said, yeah. one way or the other, but it was just a stupid thing to do. Like once they realized that that, that the situation was that critical, I mean, duh, obviously you would go to the closest place. I mean, a normal person would, unless you're a fucking Scientologist, in which case, yeah. So you'd rather have somebody die than go to somebody that wasn't a fucking Scientologist, which is stupid. Well, they felt they could trust those people. Their mentality is, is it's an us versus them mentality. Yeah, a Scientologist would be able to keep it quiet if anything went wrong. But it's probably more like, well, send them to a Scientologist, he won't charge us as much money or maybe any money. And uh, he's a good person. We we don't, we know he'll take care of. Her. Yeah, everybody else. Everybody else. They might person. hurt her. She's a Scientologist. They may like. Hate her. No, you guys we did a good trust enough them. job. They're of no doing good. That. We can't trust them. They're no good. They're not. You know. They're not watching out for us. So I think I think it's more of that than anything else. Yeah, I think it is too. But like I said, that's a stupid, stupid right. mindset. Very stupid. So well, they see non-Scientologists as fucking incompetent subhumans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is crazy to me because it's like, yeah, you've had this poor girl in your custody for like more than two weeks. And like, look what you guys did. Yeah. Talking about incompetence. Well, they got that shit directly from the source. L. Ron Hubbard could you never be wrong. You guys fucked it up. L. Ron Hubbard's not going to be wrong. Ben said their biggest concern is probably that she would be committed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was definitely like right after the yeah. initial car accident happened. That was definitely their biggest concern. Yeah. They're afraid if she's committed, then she'll fall into the hands of the enemy and they'll kill her. They'll never fucking get her straight. Because they do not believe in fucking any kind of psychology or psychi psychiatry. Any kind of mental health treatment yeah, at all. So yeah. So they think they got that shit covered. So yeah, they don't, you're right. They didn't want her fucking committed. Yeah. And they think that that's death, you mm -hmm. know, so. Yeah. 
Um, so basically, they did have a statement, um, and like I said, a lot of these statements I think came from, um, you know, because there was a trial and shit like that afterward, and like, you know, various other records and investigations that went on afterward. But um, they talked to a nurse who saw at the hospital who saw them bringing her in, and she said um, that. Yeah, she knew immediately that things uh, were not good. She said that Lisa looked very pale. She said her eyes had this really hazy look to them, and she wasn't breathing. Now, she had been breathing in the car, apparently, but when they brought her into the hospital, she wasn't. So they took her into the CPR room and did started doing CPR. Um, but the nurse was like, I'm pretty sure that she was, you know, essentially, like, dead when she got here. Um, you know, they did, they bring her, they brought her in, they did like put an uh, IV, they did all the stuff they were supposed to do and they worked on her for like a really long time, but, um, they could not revive her. So yeah, they pronounced her dead shortly afterward. Now, uh, the same nurse who saw her coming in thought there was like some kind of fishy shit going on with this shit. And she was right. So she called the cops and good for her. Like the hero nurse, she was, you know, she got involved. She was like, "I I don't think this is right. So, because her body, like, if you've seen, like, the, the photos, like, autopsy photos and stuff like that, she looked fucked up. Yeah. So, the nurse was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's something suspicious yeah, is going on. Yeah, Zach just said he saw those photos. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fucked up. Um, so, yeah. So, the Clearwater police, uh, you know, came in and said, yeah, we're going to start an investigation. Now, as soon as that happened, uh, the Scientologists go on what they do uh they they have to have come up with a cover story you know except they call it a shore story that's what they call it that's what they tell all the rubes that's that's their story and they're sticking to it what they did so they start like cobbling a story together also the room that she'd been in at the fort harrison hotel they completely cleaned it out and for whatever reason they took out the room had because it was like a hotel kind of like a resort type thing they, the room that she had been in had two queen size beds. For some reason, they took both of those out and just put one king size bed in there. I don't know what the implication of that was, but that was one thing they did. And they totally cleaned it like stem to stern. Um, so they did that. And then they kept kind of all the the people that had been taking care of her. They kind of kept everybody in one. They tried to get everybody's story straight is what they were doing. Um, so Marty Rathbun, who we've talked about before, he was actually in on this. He was, because he was very high up in the church at this time. And it was his job to handle the, kind of the blowback from this. So basically what he did, um, he had to take all, anything that the church had, paperwork, like her auditing folders, anything like that, that was pertaining to Lisa's shit, and send all of it to LA, which is where uh, David Miscavige was back then. Like send her, send him all the stuff. But Marty said the reports that everybody, because they, Scientologists have like, they write everything down. They report everything. They're kind of like Nazis in that way where it's kind of <laughs> like, they will know. It's like what they have to kind of like keep records of it. Like no matter how fucking horrible it is, yeah. they have to like keep a record of it. I don't know. It's like pathological, but so it's they, all military. And corporate. Yeah. They had yeah. like all, so they had records of like everybody. Cause everybody that went in to check on Lisa, like in the last three days before she died, they wrote down exactly what happened and like what she ate. It's like, Oh, she hit me or blah, blah, blah. You had to write out a report. So for the last three days before she died, Marty basically came in and said to the people about the paperwork from those last three days, she said, lose them. Yeah. And they've never been found. They've never been found. Yeah. The, those last three days. But they have all the other ones, like those, but Those yeah. reports were not for outsiders. They were for no. Miss Cabbage and the people. Yeah, it was like for, in, well, that's yeah. what all their shit is. And all their shit is, right. All their shit is, like, supposed to be kept internal. So, and if you release it to the public, you know, they'll have a fucking a fit. Fucking fit. Yeah. They'll have a fit. Top secret documents, goddammit. Yeah. From the cult. Yeah. Well, because like that's why they have such a freak out about like like I said, like Marty Brathbun who left, but he still believes in it. And, yeah. you know, him like trying to like teach people Scientology for free, they will try to sue your ass off if you do that cuz it's like that's, you know, privileged information. That's like our secret Scientology it's top sh- secret religious shit and you can't tell people that. It's a shame cuz this group had quite a bit of le- level of organization, a lot of money, they got a lot a lot of nice properties. Um they had cute girls working in the cult. Um but this isn't really about anything. That's the problem. If they were really kind of like if it was real topical, 
and there was like they really were trying to do some cool shit. This would be a cool organization, but it's just kind of it's not really based around anything. No, they're just a bunch of lunatics. <laughs> they're lunatics. It's funny that, how that you think can... they're like smarter and more yeah. awesome than everybody else on Earth, but they're clearly lunatics. It's just really fucking bizarre that you can make an organization of this size and complexity and sophistication over nothing really isn't that insane yeah i know that's what i mean it's like if i i kind of feel like you we talk about it sometimes and like when you talk about it it sounds absurd like this should if you put this in a book like before it existed no one would believe believe you but it exists they do all this shit it's crazy they have a system of almost military like fucking bases everywhere some of them out in the desert some of them up on top of these mountains and shit and this sounds like something out of a James Bond movie. It does. That's what I mean. It sounds yeah. like some kind of weird, like, fucking Spectre. Yeah. They got ships. Shit. You know, they got ships and stuff. I heard they, for a while, they had, back in the day, red-eye missiles and fucking anti-aircraft missiles on that ship. Fucking, I don't know if it's true. Uh, some, a lot of them had guns. They had dra- training and stuff, but select members. Um, and they're trying to do mind powers like they're Jedi's. It's just fucking hilarious, you know. But they, that they made, and, and it's huge. They have a shit ton of money. And this is nice stuff that they have. And it's just funny. It was all kind of like built on these little self help books written by a dude who's a bullshit artist. You know, I don't think he's a bad man. He wasn't a bad man. He was just bullshitting. Yeah. He bullshitting. You know? The world's a strange place. It is. You know, I think I'm kind of about something and I can't build something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the hell of and it, I'm isn't like, it? Like, a lot of times, like, if you, it's anything of substance, it's not. Yeah, uh, bullshit know. sells better than real shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that always kind of, like, bumps me, yeah. I guess. But, yeah. So, yeah, so not only did Marty Rathman basically say, hey, like, you know, throw those three days of notes down the memory hole, but also, um, three of the women the scientologists that had been uh i think it was all women that had been involved in like taking care of her like Mm -hmm. while she was there they uh abruptly left the country so that's not suspicious went to another scientology oregon somewhere else yeah because they have them all over the world and except in countries where they're illegal (laughs) you know what i mean because they are in some places russia kicked them out well a lot of uh, a lot of european countries russia kicked them the fuck i don't think they're Mm. Sandra's not here to ask anymore, but I don't think it's legal in Germany either. No. I'm pretty no, sure. No, Germany saw through this shit. Yeah, then, they're like, look, we've like, been through that religion. before. We yeah. we don't we don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. So uh, so yeah so the whole story that they constructed about what happened to Lisa McPherson was that they said, okay, well she came here of her own volition for what they called rest and relaxation because she was just like kind of stressed out. You know what I mean? Not like she was having a psychotic break or anything like that. Um, And they said, you know, she was at the hotel. Everyone was checking on her. She seemed fine. She was relaxing. Um, But then on on day 17, she got fast-acting meningitis. That's what they said. And we took her to see Dr. Minkoff um, because that was who she requested, even though he was 45 minutes away. She wanted to see him because he was a Scientologist. And, um, but then she died. That was their story. Mm. So, uh, basically, so the cops were just kind of like, huh, okay, um, I don't think so. So the cops actually went to the Fort Harrison Hotel to do an investigation. And like I said, when they went into the room where she had been, um, it was all cleaned. It had all been done out. Like, the furniture had been replaced. Like, everything like that. Which, again, gee, not at all suspicious, is it? Then they interviewed, like, a bunch of the people that had been taking care of her. And they said, to a man, they all said the exact same story. The all the same, quote-unquote, shore story that they had agreed upon. They all gave the exact same details. Um, but, unfortunately for the Scientologists, other people had seen some shit that happened, too. Because, uh, one, they had the autopsy photos. And they said, well, a lot of that stuff is not consistent with what you're saying happened. And also, the paramedics that had seen her... Um, you know, it, after the initial accident, they thought that she was like normal weight. They thought she was maybe 130, 140 pounds. When she died, she was 108 pounds. Damn. Um, so yeah, so she, she had lost, lost that, that much weeks? weight in like a little over two weeks. Yeah. 
That's so, water weight, a lot of that. Dehydration. Well, yeah, that's what they think was one of the causes of death, was yeah. dehydration. So, yeah, and that's the thing, too. And also, the cops were very suspicious that it's like, we don't care if she did ask, like, after she was in this shitty of a condition, you should have taken her to the nearest hospital and not driven her, like, four fucking hospitals away, like, 45 minutes, um, and because she was probably already dead when she got there. So the cops were really not buying it. Um, now, basically, it's kind of like, so at this point, Benetta Slaughter, like I said, the woman that owned the company where Lisa worked, she calls up um, Lisa's mom, whose name was Fanny, and told her that she died. And that, and Benetta straight up lied to Lisa's mom and basically saying, oh, well, um, she just suddenly got sick. Like, she was fine up until that last day. And then all of a sudden, she just got sicker and sicker, and we took her to the hospital, and she died. We don't. It was meningitis. We don't really know what happened. So she straight up lied to the girl's mom, which is, that's fucked up. Um, they also didn't tell the mom, because the mom, I think, was still back in Dallas. They also didn't tell the mom about the car accident, didn't tell her about the whole introspection rundown thing, didn't tell them about any of that stuff. Basically, their story was, yeah, she just showed up here, and then she suddenly got sick, and she died at the end. That was, like, the thing. That's what they told her fucking mom. So you know what I mean? Uh, so the mom also wasn't buying it. <laughs> so the mom, like, flew to Clearwater to kind of figure out what the fuck was going on, too. And uh, basically, the mom said, the mom and the sister, like, when they got there, they said they get to Lisa's apartment because, you know, they wanted some of her things, like her personal belongings and stuff. And they said that when they got there, her roommate and a bunch of the other Scientologists were, like, taking stuff away. Hmm. They took, like, all her shit. And I think, too, that her um, personal bank account had $11 left in it, like, when she died. Hmm. So they also took all her money. That's what they're assuming. I don't um, know. Scientologists didn't have much money. They don't pay him much. How much did... I, well, wait a minute. Was she staff? Well, she had... Yeah. yeah well, she, she worked... Staff. Well, she had a normal job. Okay. She, had, she was public then. Yeah. Okay. She had a normal job. She all wasn't, right. like, Sea Org or anything like that. Okay. So, but, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, she donated all her money to pay... You know what they did? They took her shit to pay for her treatment. Probably, that's yeah. That's what they did. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the way Scientologists are. None of that shit's free. You're not a freeloader. They'll, they'll charge you for being a freeloader. Yeah. Yeah. And they won't tell you about it either. No. Like, you'll only learn about it, like, after the fact. Yeah. You'll be in oh, the by C- the way, you owe us this much you'll money. You'll be in the Sea Org for fucking ten years, all right? Fucking living like a slave, not even getting paid. <laughs> Eating their fucking slop. And then they'll kick you out over some kind of fucking out of ethics or something, you know what I mean? You did something wrong. And then they hit you with a bill for $40,000. Freeloader. Yeah. <laughs> Freeloader bill. You lived for 10 years here. We're going to charge you for that bed you were sleeping in. Even Those though bitch. you worked for that. Even though you worked that for That whole time. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> your labor isn't worth anything yeah, to yeah. them. You know yeah. what I mean? That's, so it's that. And they never have the money to pay for that shit. It's of just course not. Even if they shit. did, it's like, what? They can't legally come no. after you for that. No. Like... Eat a dick. But I'm not the Scientologists, though, the way the way they're they're so mentally screwed up, they try to pay that. They probably oh, yeah, would. Yeah, of course they would. But it's like they don't have any legal standing. They can't make you pay that. It's like it's fine. Just no. ignore them. But um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. So and that kind of this kind of thing freaked me out too because when the mom and the sister came and saw like the roommate and I was like, I knew Lisa's roommate. She worked with me. I can't like I said I can't remember what her name was, but she worked at the same company as I did. And everybody, like, somebody else at the company said, yeah, that that was the woman that lived with Lisa, like, when Lisa died. And so the roommate and all the other Scientologists, like, went in there and, like, took all her shit. Like, so her mom couldn't even get any of it. Like, I think she got a couple items of, like, clothing or something like that. But most of the shit was already gone. So stay classy, Scientology. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Um, So, you know, and the mom is, like, she's, like, asking, look, can anybody tell me what really happened? And, like, none of them would tell her anything, which, again, made her, like, this, like, super, super fishy, right? Now, it so happened that even back in 1995, uh, a lot of people in Clearwater uh, did not like Scientologists and were, and protested it, like, all the time. And they had already been planning a protest for that upcoming spring. I think it was supposed to be, like, in March of 1996. And, um... It so happened that they were meeting with the cops, um, you know, kind of planning the protest. It's like, hey, where can we go, like, legally? And is this going to be okay with the ordinances and all that other kind of stuff? And somebody in the police, like, happened to tell them about, 
Lisa McPherson dying and they recognize the address like as the Fort Harrison Hotel because that was where they usually protested. So a couple of them started looking into it being like, oh my God, what happened to this girl? Did they kill her? So um, at that point, um, they kind of went to uh, like a woman that worked at the Tampa Tribune, like one of the main papers over there. And so they um, they kind of like collaborated, like the protesters and the newspaper lady. And they're like, um, OK, we need to find out like what the fuck went on here, because the Scientologist is going to lie about it because they knew who, they knew the score on that in that regard. So um, so basically what they did was. That I mean, that was kind of the way the story came out, like the protesters, like kind of getting up with the newspaper people because they knew somebody that was in the cops and they figured out what was going on. So they do um, an autopsy. And like I said, Zach, the, you can see the autopsy photos online. It's like, you know, I wouldn't recommend it because they're pretty nasty. But you know what I mean? They're there if you want to see them. Um, so they do the autopsy. Now, uh, the first guy that was doing the autopsy was the assistant ME, the medical examiner. He actually never finished it because they asked somebody like asked him to resign. I think there was like a lot of weird, like nefarious shit going on behind the scenes with this shit here. So the report that was eventually finished, um, they, the cause of death on there was a thromboembolism of the left pulmonary artery caused by bed rest and severe dehydration. So they basically ruled the death undetermined. So like it wasn't an accident. It wasn't homicide, but they just kind of like left it ambiguous, I guess. Um, the autopsy report also had, like, they had, there was a bunch of bruises. She had a bunch of bruises. Um, like, there was, a, like, an abrasion across her nose. And a bunch of, very famously, a bunch of insect bites. Like, she was covered with cockroach bites. Yeah. So there was that, too. Yeah, they were had her up, and I think it was Big Blue was the name of the building that they had her at. Wasn't it at Big Blue? Well, Fort Harrison. Uh, where's that? Clearwater. That's Clearwater. what I've been talking okay, about okay, so the whole not, time. Yeah, so it's not Big Blue. Okay, yeah, that one over there. Evidently, uh... Yeah, in places infested with roaches. They said Big Blue was infested with roaches, too. So I don't know. Maybe that's a Scientology thing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they don't clean shit up, or I don't know. I don't know what it is. Although, like I said, it's to be fair, it's Florida. Pretty much everything's infested with roaches <laughs> to some degree. Um, so, yeah. So the autopsy report, like I said, the assistant uh, medical examiner got asked to resign. So the autopsy report got completed by... Uh, the supervisor who was name was Joan Wood. Now, Joan Wood, the, uh, you know, the, the main Emmy, she was actually, she went on TV. She was on that. Remember that show inside edition? She went on, she went on that show like in early 1997. And she said that, you know, in contrast to what the Scientology, like Scientology's bullshit story that they were trying to peddle, she said on TV that the autopsy showed that um, that Lisa McPherson's condition had deteriorated like over a long time, like that she had clearly been without fluids for between five to ten days. She was drastically underweight. Um, she had been she probably went into a coma 24 to 48 hours before she died. Uh, she was covered with cockroach bites, like I said. So. You know, clearly this whole story that Scientology told about her suddenly getting meningitis and dying from it was clearly not true because she's like, this looked like it took like a very long time. At that point, uh, as they do, Scientology's phalanx of lawyers uh, tried to sue her, um, you know, because they're basically like, well, you fucked up your shit because you went on TV and like said all that stuff. And they also wanted, um, they sued because they wanted to get access to uh, all the files that the medical examiner had that had like all the stuff about, uh, you know, blood samples and stuff like that, like from Lisa McPherson's body. Um, so basically their, their argument was, well, because you went on TV and talked about it and made it public, then you shouldn't be able to keep your, the records closed because you already blabbed them to everybody. So we should be allowed to have them or like see them. You know what I mean? So that's what they did. Now, I mean, honestly, because they asked for them before and the authorities were like, absolutely not, because it's like an investigation, right? So they wouldn't let them have them. But so they were trying to sue, like, to, to look at them. Now, interestingly, another newspaper, the St. Pete Times, uh, they also went to a bunch of other medical experts to kind of get, like, backup on this. Like, is that autopsy report correct? And uh, five other medical experts uh, said the same thing. They said, yeah, that's, you know, that that's, looks like what happened. Like, that looks consistent or whatever. 
So, um, because Scientology, like I said, are mad little bitches, um, they hired their own team to argue against what the medical examiner and all the other experts said. Now, two of the people that they got were actually, like, legit, like, experts, I guess. They were, like, forensic pathologists. Um, so they actually got them to say, and I'm not sure how they did this, but they got them, the two of them, to say that Lisa McPherson had died suddenly from a blood clot in her left lung that had originated from, like, she had maybe hit her knee, like, during the initial car accident, and oh, then it, yeah, like, yeah. traveled to... Blame it yeah. on the car accident. Yeah, so that's, they yeah. actually got two, like, legit pathologists to say that. I'm not entirely sure how. I don't know if they had some dirt on them or paid them off or whatever the fuck. Both. Maybe. Both. What, what, who are you seeing naked? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. There's a channel out oh, there okay. fucking saying I'm an unemployed housewife. Oh, oh half fucking, naked you. Okay. Half, yeah, half naked. I see you naked. You. <laughs> I looked at her channel. She's just a narcissistic housewife. Narcissistic? Nar- that's what she said. She's a narcissistic. No, oh, I thought you were just being mean. No, no, no. No, okay. she's cute. She's just uh, just another channel. <laughs> she's got a lot of videos and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they got the two pathologists to say that. So, um,. So basically what happened, so then they were like arguing over, because of course it was to the Scientologist's benefit to say that she had just come there of her own volition and then had died suddenly and it was of course not their fault. So they were mad at the original um, report, which said that she clearly died over a very long period of time and had lost all this weight and was dehydrated and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, so they're saying, no, she was already skinny when she came in and all this other kind of crap. It was just, it was a fucking shit show, like I said. Um, so yeah. Now, what ended up happening with this? Because there was such, there was a big argument about it. So then they have to bring in like this other review board to kind of like sort out what the fuck was going on to like see if anything that the Scientology team was coming up with was legit. It's like, you know, what are we going to do about this? Now, after the review, it should be noted, the original medical examiner changed her cause of death from undetermined to accident and put on there that about like maybe the auto accident maybe caused some kind of like blood clot or something like that. So again, not really sure what's going on there. Like, I don't know if the Scientologist got to her and they were just kind of like, Hey, we know about this, that, and the other thing, or here's $50,000 or who knows, but you know, she changed the shit right on the autopsy report, which you know a uh, cult member will do anything for the cult yeah All that's right. that's what i'm saying i didn't cost him any money uh-huh. probably got some free ot training we'll bring you up at ot level just anything oh yeah. boy yeah yeah <laughs> you'll can't, level up can't wait your wizard skills yeah, yeah. can't wait man yeah. if they really gave me wizard skills they'd be in big yeah. trouble because i'd lightning bolt their heads right off <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so anyway um so basically, so they ask this woman, like the ME, like, what the fuck? Like, why did you change what you put on your initial report? And she came up with some kind of story about, oh, well, you know, just, you know, just all this technical medical stuff. But it's like, oh, I kind of realized, blah, blah, blah. But basically, it was something that she said that she missed the first time, even though nobody could understand, like, how she could have missed it the first time. Like, if she'd done her job competently, you know what I mean? Yeah. I kind of suspect that the Scientologist kind of, like, got to her. And maybe they threatened her. I don't really know. So basically because she had changed the, because they had done this review and because she had changed, you know, the thing from undetermined to accident. So there was a criminal case pending about Lisa McPherson's death, but it was dismissed at that point because it's like, Oh, well now there's no criminal anything. Um, So basically they did. um, That's the thing. So, like, the, um, what do you call it? The assistant state attorney, whose name was Douglas Crow at the time, he wrote this big, long memo, and he sent that to the state attorney, and he's like, well, we got to drop the criminal case because, you know, we don't have this. He's like, he thought that there was still probable cause. Like, he still thought there was, like, some weird shit. But he's like, but the fact that the ME changed her story um, and kind of, like, threw a monkey wrench in the whole program so it's like we don't really have enough credible evidence at this point because she keeps like changing her shit so we don't think that we'd be able to get a conviction so 
you know, basically he was like, well, what's the point? Because, you know, we don't think we're going to get any charges. Now, um, so the thing that happened after this, though, which, like I said, you have this lady whose name was Cheryl Waldrip, um, and she was a reporter at the Tampa Tribune. And she was basically watching this shit show. And also she thought it was really weird that, um, that there had not been an obituary, like, run for Lisa at all. So she actually kind of got together with Lisa's family and they sort of collaborated. And so they, she wrote this big, long um, story, like in the paper, it was like front page. Um, and it was basically called uh, mystery surrounds Scientologist death. And so from that point forward, it kind of seems like the media and protesters and the family of Lisa McPherson just kept like hitting Scientology about it because you know, Scientology, obviously, they were trying to, like, spin this story. It's like, oh, they didn't have any culpability in the whole thing. But everybody else, like, just started, like, chipping away at it. Because, like, obviously, this poor girl died in their care. And obviously, something they did was responsible for that to some degree. And people wanted, like, some fucking justice done. So Lisa's family actually sued the Church of Scientology in 1997 for wrongful death. And um, so the court actually ordered them to turn over all the caretaker logs, which is where a lot of that stuff came from, other than, like I said, the last three days, which have been lost forever, apparently. And um, in 1998, in late 1998, actually the state of Florida um, charged them as well. Actually, specifically the Flag Services Organization. Yeah. Um, they charged them, the state of Florida charged them with uh, abuse of a disabled adult and practicing medicine without a license. Yeah. Um, so basically That's a good description of what happened. Yeah. And well, it's like, they didn't want to go. I feel like they wanted to go for some greater charges, but they thought those would be like safe because they were kind of a little bit low level, but still well, like it's not maybe. murder. They weren't trying to kill her. Right. They were trying to help her, but they're just, they're not doctors, but they're just idiots, Yeah, they're idiots. <laughs> but they're just idiots. Right. So, uh, yeah. And, um, so basically after that, like I said about the protesters before that had already been planning a protest, um, you know, around that, like a different time. So what they started doing, though, was they used to protest around uh, L. Ron Hubbard's birthday, uh, which was in March. But they started changing it to the day that Lisa McPherson died, which was December 5th. Um, and they started, like, they started early, like, that year, and they started doing, like, candlelight vigils and stuff. Scientologists would come out and, like, blow their candles out and shit like that. What a bunch of dicks. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Can you be any more dickish than that? Jesus yeah, Christ. They told her to do it. I mean, Fucking, well, yeah, but it's just like, Jesus Christ. Uh, what's, what's, what's the name of that organization? Which one? Part of the Sea Org. It's their, it's their uh, intelligence fucking agency. It's not OSS, is it? What's, what's I thought it was name? OSA, right? OSA. Yeah, OSA. Yes, o OSA. Yeah, OSA would have them going out there to fuck. You blow those candles out. You blow those candles out. Yeah, OSA. That's what it is. Yeah. That's their version of, like, the CIA or FBI. Yeah. Yeah, they have their own version of everything. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's busted up into a bunch of different uh, divisions and departments. And it... It has its own intelligence in the inter internal security department, OSA. It's like their version of the FBI. But it's also kind of like a, an intelligence agency. It's like the CIA. And they're not a joke, man. They, they did the largest penetration of the fucking U.S. government of all times. It was done by fucking Scientology. Yeah, the IRS. Yeah, the IRS. They infiltrated. And, and also the FBI. They infiltrated the yeah. FBI. It was called Operation Snow White. Where they sent all those damn cult, cult members to go get jobs with the U.S. government. And they got jobs. Because they were qualified. Got in there and they were fucking giving up government secrets to the cult. And all because L. Ron Hubbard thought the FBI was after him. He wanted to know what the FBI knew about him. And they didn't know anything. They didn't give a shit about him. They didn't care about him. Well, that's what was ironic it's about funny. it. It's like, <laughs> if he hadn't done that, he probably just could have yeah. operated without. But it's like, ooh, what do they know about me? It's like nothing. Yeah. It was like, oh, well, now we're interested because what yeah. the fuck are you up to? Yeah, they didn't know anything about him Dummy. and fucking didn't care about him. Right. I'm like, but now they do. You yeah. just called attention to yourself. Hilarious. Swift. So, so yeah. Operation Snow White. You look it up. So we're, so we're going to be right there on Wikipedia. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous. And then fucking like I said, if somebody made this up, nobody would believe it. And story. they got busted. Yeah. And L. Ron Hubbard blamed it all on his wife, and his wife went to prison for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. ain't that some shit? Like I said, stay classy, son. Yeah, I wasn't in charge of that department. Stay My wife was in classy. charge of that department. <laughs> I didn't know she did that. Yeah, she was. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so yeah, basically. All right. So, um, 1999, the Lisa McPherson Trust, uh, they opened it up only a couple blocks, just to rub it in the face, only a couple blocks away from the Fort Harrison Hotel. And their whole thing was basically just telling everybody, like, about how fucking horrible the church were. Um, I think that was kind of started by uh, Lisa's mom. Now, unfortunately, like, she died not too long afterward. But, you know, and I don't think the trust is around anymore, but it was around for a little while. Uh, Dr. Minkoff, the guy, the Scientologist doctor that they drove all that way to see, um, he actually had his license suspended in 2001, uh, thankfully. Uh, not for killing her, but for prescribing medicine to her without having seen her, which, like, again, that's, that's a big no-no. So he had his license suspended for that. Um, so I kind of feel like maybe this case, I know a lot of people maybe didn't know about it at the time, but I think this might have been, I don't want to say like the beginning of the end because these motherfuckers are still around, but I think this was the beginning of their kind of downward slide where people actually were kind of waking up to the fact that they weren't just like this funny little jokey punchline cult, like, oh, what a bunch of weirdos, that they were actually like kind of dangerous and yeah, and were, that maybe we shouldn't be like tolerating it. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were they were kind of sophisticated enough to be a threat, right? Um, I kind of feel like this was maybe the first, and kind of delusional enough to be dangerous. They're they're delusional. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, but I do definitely feel like, and like I said, this was ninety five. So when when she died, and I know that maybe like it didn't really go mainstream. I feel like until. Probably, like, I want to say the South Park episode. I mean, that had a massive cultural impact. Because I remember that happening. Because yeah. I feel like prior to that, like, like I said, people just, they knew about it. But they didn't really think about it. They didn't really, like, think about They didn't know that much about what they were up to. They knew it's like, oh, that's that weird thing that Tom Cruise is in that makes him jump on couches or whatever. Yeah. But I don't think anybody really thought about it beyond that. I don't think anybody really thought of them as, like, a dangerous cult prior to that. Mm. But like I said, I think Lisa McPherson's death was like the first nail in that coffin. And then I think maybe like the South Park episode and stuff like that. I think that like, you know, made it like go into like a much wider, like a more mainstream knowledge. So um, well, there was a lot of shit. There was shit. There going, was there was like, shit going on back into the 70s. Yeah, there was. Knew. There was stuff happening on the free winds that was kind of strange back in the 70s. Um, and there was some false imprisonment stuff and... Uh, Buying fucking any aircraft missiles was one of the things that I, 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 it was rumored about them that the FBI knew about that. That they had bought some any aircraft missiles to put on the free winds. Like somebody's going to attack the free winds. Yeah. You know? And I think it was red eye missiles, which is a shoulder launched fucking man portable any aircraft missile. They call it an M pad nowadays. It was like bef they were older than the fucking Stinger. They weren't as good as a Stinger. Uh, if I remember, it was red eye missiles. That they evidently is rumored to have some, because those were available on the black market. You could get them, especially if you had access to the sea. Because we were giving them out to fucking rebel groups. You know, what I mean, some of those rebels would sell them right back on the black market. But you'd have to get that through a damn port somewhere in a fucking shady fucking Central American port somewhere. You know, you could get your hands on something like that. But. uh I don't know if that was ever verified, but I remember reading old reports about that. But that was before the McPherson case. So there was shit, there was spooky shit being spoken about. Yeah. Scientology. It's like I said, I, I just think, that. I just feel like it wasn't like yeah. widely known. Yeah, yeah. Prior to maybe like Yeah, you had to be kind of like in on it. You had to be to interested know, in that kind of stuff in that specifically. Kind of stuff to know that Scientology really was kind of like spooky. Yeah. They had secret military bases. But man, when you're hearing that, sh you're hearing about that shit in the late '70s and early '80s. It's like, no, can't be. Well, that's what I mean. It's like yeah. if you said that about anything else, right, yeah. I'd probably be like inclined to be skeptical, mm -hmm. because most of the time, most of the time, like any stories like that are usually bullshit. Yeah. But in this case, this is the one case where it's actually not bullshit. Right. They do actually have all the crazy shit that they say. Yeah. Um, Danny Rowling asked, "Is Scientology for or against premarital sex?" Um. Against in general. In they're general, against, they're against sex. Basically. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah. they definitely do not want you getting pregnant, especially no. if you're in the Sea Org. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they're um. This is not a sex cult. This is uh. They're real. 
when I say the word conservative, I don't want you to think Republicans or anything. They're just real traditional. They're like something out of the 1950s, mixed with Maoism and pseudoscience and uh, corporate jargon. It's it's man, this is just a perfect product of the Cold War. Really, it's just yeah. It's a perfect product of the Cold War. It's very Cold Warish. It would be great, and they have they mention shit like this in like the ge- video game Fallout. All right, it's like something out of Fallout. It's the military in during World War Two. The military became corporate. The government merged with that. The corporations merged. It's called the military industrial complex, and then. And then fucking politics merged with that. You had a two-party system now, Republicans and Democrats, but they're still part of that fucking same system, and they're loyal to the military-industrial complex. They're not independent parties. They're controlled. The only thing that was missing was the fucking religion, and that's what L. Ron Hubbard was trying to fit in there. All right, He's trying to make a religion that can mix right in with that. Structurally, it could. Philosophy, the material behind it, no. It was too fucking redneck. It was too fucking... No, no. It had to be a lot more sophisticated. What worked was more like psychology and social science. Shit that came out of universities. That could kind of merge in with the military-industrial complex. Not Scientology. But Scientology was supposed to be that. It was a corporate religion. That was kind of warlike. All right? It would have been. It would have worked had the had the source been more educated, and, and you know what I mean. Had he been able to write better, and had it had more of a scientific flair to it, something that where there was some proof behind it, maybe. Or, but no, he he just wasn't. No, he had a good team behind him, but he just couldn't really write the kind of material to unhinge psychology and social studies and get them out of universities. Because he tried to, all right? Scientology tried with to get that shit out of universities and get Scientology into it, but that would never work. Not with, not with the intellectual classes that you have in university life today. They'd never accept Scientology. So instead, he tried to fucking shoehorn it into Central Africa. They tried to take over an African nation with it one time. They did, yeah. So... It just wasn't written well enough from the very beginning. It should have incorporated everything that was out there and used all the damn fucking Freudian type psychology mixed with sociology and, and, and all the damn, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, 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 the, the fucking, uh, what was the name of those guys? These dudes that came over here from Germany. Oh, shit. Should have merged in with all those guys and corporatized that, and that probably would have worked. Okay, but he wasn't gonna be able to do that on his own. You know, one writer can't do that. You have to incorporate other writers and to make it look less monopolistic, like like it's coming from a collective, not from a single individual. That was where that's where Scientology failed. It was always gonna be a cult religion if it came from one man. If you want the world to accept it, you have to make it look like it was something that came out from thousands of people and that everyone agrees on it. That's how you do it. The Frankfurt School, that's what I'm talking about. He should have merged in with the Frankfurt School of Writers and made it a little bit more Marxist. And and then you probably would have been able to get that into universities and take over that way. But no, them fucking university Frankfurt fucking dudes aren't going to let some goyim like this fucking take over their system. It's not going to happen. No. No, he was Anglo-Saxon. They're not going to let it happen. Ben says, is it the hubologist or the hubologist in Fallout? Hubologist. Hubologist, or a direct parody of the Scientologists. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to take off in the UFO, and it spins them and it kills them all. The hubology. <laughs> Which yeah, yeah. that that really did happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I played that little thing. It was funny. I knew exactly what they were doing. I remember you playing that. Hubology, yeah, yeah. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, Danny Rowling said the life and death of the late 70s, 80s wrestler Bruiser Brody, a.k.a. Frank Goodish, would be a sick show. Ben says, true, but it's been done by every single wrestling channel three times. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know anything about wrestling, so it's like, 
so it would be new to me. <laughs> and it might be new to, like, everybody else, too. I'm always surprised, like, how many people know stuff about wrestling, like, how people are, like, really into it. Like, I'm not, like, you know, that's what, it's just not my thing, and it's, like, it's just funny to me. I, like, I, what was I watching the other day? If you guys ever, like, watch that YouTube channel Company Man, where he does all these videos about, you know, obviously, like, different companies, and he talks about their history and stuff, and he's done, like, several, uh, several ones about, like, he did WWF or WWE or whatever the fuck, I don't, I don't really know, and, uh, so he's done a couple of them like that, and he's obviously, like, really into it, and it's just, like, funny to me, like, how, how it never occurred to me that he would be, like, into wrestling, <laughs> but then, like, he did a couple of ones where he's talking about, like, the business side of it behind it, and he seemed like he was really into it, I thought that was really funny, but, um, I don't usually, like, I usually just watch, um, I like the restaurant ones, actually. Like, I find those more interesting than it's like I'll watch them all because like he's I like his channel, but usually like I like the restaurant ones more than anyone else. Like the ones about like banks and stuff like that are kind of boring, but you know, I kind of like he does a series called what's it called? I think it's called like Bigger Than You Know, where he'll take like he'll take something like Procter and Gamble or something like that that owns like a whole bunch of shit that like most people don't know that they own. So I I like those kind of ones, but. I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me see. Ben said, uh, an auto accident isn't an accident in medical sense, is it? Um, no. Well, well, see, that's the thing. I'm thinking that if they changed it, because what else? I'm not a medical examiner, so I'm not really sure. Like, if I know, well, obviously, they can put homicide or suicide. Okay, fine. Or you can put accident, like, if you fall off your fucking roof or something like that. And then, like, if they don't really know, then they'll put, like, undetermined or whatever. But I'm assuming, like, accident, that would... She's basically saying that... That now she thinks that it was something that happened in the car accident that caused, like, some, pro like, complications later on. So I guess technically that would be an accident because nobody caused it, I guess. I don't really know. But I still think that's bullshit because it's very, very obvious that she fucking got dehydrated and like lost all that weight because she was in that fucking room you know yeah. getting bitten by cockroaches and then she fucking died and it's just i don't know this case like makes me so mad and it and it made me even more mad because i didn't i had heard of that case right when i went over there like i'd kind of heard of, i didn't know that much about it but i'd kind of heard of it just tangentially and then, like, when I had worked at the place for a little while, like, not everybody there was one of the pod people, you know what I mean? So, like, some of them were normal, and, like, you could talk to them. And one of the guys that had worked there for a long time, like, he was an editor, and he, I think it was um, him and a couple of the other normal people, we were all out to lunch together, because we like to go and, like, talk about the Scientologists. Like, we'd yeah. go out to a restaurant and, like, gossip about them. Because uh, we were, like, like I said, we were the only normal people there. And they told me, they're like, yeah, that Lisa McPherson used to work here. Like, when I worked there, it was, I guess it was, like, seven years later. They're like, yeah, she used to work here. And what's-her-face, whose name I can't remember. Um, yeah, that was her roommate. And a bunch of people, like, David Slaughter and Benetta Slaughter, like, who owned it, um, you know, they had to, like, give, they had to, you know, give testimony to the trial. And, like, some of the other people that worked there did, too, because they had all known her because she'd worked there. And I was like, then, I think that was one of the things that, really made me think oh my god i gotta get the fuck out of here because i started looking that case up and then i started getting deeper and deeper and like going down the scientology rabbit hole and being like oh my god these people are fucking insane um you know i don't really want to be around this anymore so at that point i was just like fuck this and it's like i had to get out i only worked there for like eight months but holy shit holy shit um yeah so, uh, I guess that's pretty much it, right? Well, shit, man. I got fucking work to do down in the kitchen anyway. All right. Ben, uh, oh, Ben said there's a case here with a little girl who died from diabetes while in the care of a religious circle, and people can't understand why they're charged with lesser charges than murder. Like, no intent. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think they, stuff like that, that it's fucked up, um, and it shouldn't happen. But yeah, they probably didn't intend for her to die. But still, their actions caused her death. So I'm glad that they still have that, like, negligent homicide kind of thing there. Because it's like, you know, you might not have intended to kill her, but you still fucked up and did some stupid shit and made her die. So you should still be held responsible for that. You know what I mean? Because of your stupidity and incompetence. I, you know? could, I could microwave all that uh, Chinese food. We could eat some more of that. Well, yeah, I thought that's yeah, what we were going to do. Right, I mean, yeah. we already paid for it, right? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to That's the thing about, like, that Chinese food. Like I said, it's 10 50 
But you eat on it twice. Well, it's, it's ten. Good. Well, that's what I mean. It's ten. Yeah. Ten fifty. You get like a big, huge thing of like yeah. rice, either regular yeah. fried rice, which is what I got, or fried rice with pork in it, and you get a whole big thing of whatever your Meat. dish is. Yeah, lots of it. I got sesame chicken, yeah. and you get um, egg roll, an egg roll, and yeah. a cookie. Yeah. And so and I you can't eat it all. I couldn't eat it all. Yeah. Like I ate, I ate probably more than I should have. You ate three quarters of it. Was it wasn't. Like, I don't know. if It wasn't three quarters. It was. Know. It was maybe. No, it wasn't because mm-hmm. I left like a bunch of meat there. Okay. And I actually like was really full, and I was like, oh, I probably should have stopped earlier, but I was yeah. like so hungry. Yeah. We'll we'll but, heat that back up again, and then I'll see what else I can do before tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'll make some cranberry sauce for, and then get that shit fucking in a refrigerator so it'll be ready. I make the I make a cranberry sauce. Yes, I do. I got frozen cranberries and everything. Yeah, we don't we don't we don't deal with that bullshit that just no, like that the shit gel that can. Fuck no. Plop. <laughs> I make my own sauce. Yeah. Which Put is spices so in it, spices, crushed up pecans in it. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I gotta save then, room um, to like eat all this stuff tomorrow. Yeah. Like I said, I always look forward. We're gonna to have it, leftovers for a week. I'm sure we are. That's yeah. the thing. I'll figure out what and, to do And and the thing about it too is that like even though like yeah, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, it's a holiday, but I still got yeah. like a bunch of videos I gotta do tomorrow. Yeah. Because I'm behind. Okay. And like I said, the our one that we're gonna do on Friday, which like I said, this week the movie retrospective, which is actually gonna be Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. Um, normally if you're a patron, you would be seeing it tomorrow because I always put them up a day early, but we didn't get it done. So yeah. probably we won't do it until Friday. So I'll put it up sometime Friday. Anyway, and like I said, probably um, I have a couple of videos going up tomorrow, but I haven't made them yet, so I got to do those tomorrow because, you know. But I did get that. If you're not on my Scare Salon site, go over there. I just put up like an hour long video about scary Looney Tunes cartoons, which was like really entertaining. At least, at least if I do say so myself. I thought I had a good time making it, but you know what I mean. So, uh, but yeah. So some of the videos, like I said, this week might be a little bit late because of the holiday and because of various other things that I had to do. So hopefully. No one will be too mad about it. Uh, Danny Rowling wants me to do the raccoon button, like to close out the show. So we'll do that. Well, I still haven't made a man said I could. I'll get around to that one of these days, I promise. But all right, so we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Where is that raccoon? There it is. Okay. <laughs> we did it. It's like, where is that raccoon? All right. So uh, thank you, everybody, for dropping by and hanging out with us this evening. Thank you for your super chats. And if you're in the United States and are celebrating Thanksgiving, please have a good Thanksgiving tomorrow. Don't eat too much or eat too much if you want to. That's fine. Uh, I probably will. Uh, so yeah, we will be back on Friday evening doing our sidetrack show. We're actually going to be going out Friday night. So, you know, it'll be like a pregame kind of show. We're doing Memento Mori that night. So, uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys again Friday night. Good night.